Hi guys, Rich here from Steedcast. Uh, just want to let you know that during the recording of this episode we ran into a few um, audio and connection issues um, with Sean's internet connection. So you might see some choppiness in places or um, some audio dropouts, things like that. Um, I just wanted to let you know beforehand we've tried our best to edit all this out, but <sighs> unfortunately these things happen. Anyway, on to the cast. So, I was thinking to myself one day, around the time of the KFC vegan burger launch, I was thinking to myself, what vegan would step foot inside a KFC? I soon followed a conversation with our friend Sean, who actually tried one of these vegan meals. Upon trying, the gentleman said to Sean, the chips aren't vegan. This is Steakast. Oh, Steve Cass, the chips are vegan. Here we are. Any news, guys? How are we all doing? Been a while. Very good. Yes, sir. good. All right, bad. Not bad. Yeah, yes, Christ. I, I got a baby son. A baby born <laughs> son. A baby born. Yeah, Christ. I. He's taking up all of my time and resources and energy at the moment. Sorry, son. Great. Giving a wine, son? Sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Red wine makes him sleep, man. You're <laughs> divine. That's Virtually right in the baby's head, do we, son? Can't do accents anymore, though, can you? Uh, fuck no. <laughs> yeah. Um... What about that uh, Maxwell person getting... Uh... Oh, that's for, that's for um, Recapa Sword, that'll be, son, I think. Oh, that's it. one for Tom Kitters, that is. Crazy. We can't get into that in Recapa Sword. Fair enough, fair enough. Good juicy bit for the Recapa Sword. That'll fit in nicely. She might even yeah. be dead by then. So, like, you know, <laughs> it's like... Could well be... The, the Corona got her. The Rona got her. What are you having? So it's not going to So, it probably, um, it probably isn't going to happen. Oh, shit. What, what, yeah, are, sorry, then? what, what are the predictions uh, with, 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 what, with what's going to happen with her? What, what do you all reckon? Coronavirus. Coronavirus. Yeah. Or she'll just get off with, like, very little charges. That's, that's what I think as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um, she could yeah. say that uh, like... she could say that Epstein coerced her into doing all that stuff. Yeah, uh, um, I think though uh, it might be better not to delve too far into that. But we've checked our predictions out there and uh, <laughs> see what happens. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I my... can't, I can't wait until all this is over with, so we can get back to doing podcasts like together in a room. Ah, please, please, please. Definitely. Definitely, 100%. I'm missing, I'm missing the uh, the quality of the audio. <laughs> it's bugging yeah. me. You know, um, I, I just want it back. But we are, uh, just for everyone else, we are trying to plan out keeping the video element of the podcast going um, when we do go back to our usual format. So we're not going to completely abandon YouTube and not put them on YouTube in visual form. So it is something that we're, trying to plan out um once lockdown's over although in Merthyr we might be in lockdown for like another month because we've had a massive spike but there we go who knows i've also, I've also, got, more, um, I've also got more interviews planned but I, I don't know what shows are going ahead and what shows aren't going ahead so not even the artists know so who knows at the moment oh like um general interviews yeah just just art, more artist interviews really more more shows and things uh, but again, I, I don't know. Right up as far as December, we've got stuff. But even that might not happen. Who knows? Who knows? Mm. But I can't really tell anybody anything on that front at the moment. Going back just slightly to what you were saying about the coronavirus outbreak in Merthyr Tidville, um, the second or maybe first highest new rate of cases in the country at the moment. First, yeah. because of the first? Be- because of the meat factory, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. of the yeah. fucking yeah. slaughterhouse. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Ironically. That's, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ironically, this episode focuses on veganism and vegetarianism. Here we are. Boom, and, uh, cast. Slaughterhouses. Slaughterhouse. So, if I was to say to you, what is veganism? What would you understand it would be? Eating fucking plants. My understanding is veganism is the practice of abstaining from the use of animal products. 
Uh, it rejects the commodity status of animals, and um, it also it can also be in, well mostly is, is in terms of of clothing and and other things as well. Um, your jeans, your shoes, your t-shirts you're wearing, right mm -hmm. down to that as well. If somebody fully practices the vegan lifestyle, uh, many vegans boycott. Um, that side of it as well. It's, it's, it's more of a lifestyle often than a, a dietary choice or requirement. To my understanding of it. Yeah, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say more often. I'd say pretty much always. To be yeah. honest. Yeah. yeah. I bet it kind of like rewires the way you think. Uh, not not like uh, physically maybe, but you know you'd be more uh, like uh, understanding of of the pain the animals go through and things because you've researched all that stuff and. It just make you think uh, a bit more consciously about all that shit, like. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. You know, yeah. Over compassionate side of things. Yeah. Um, yeah. Vegetarianism, more along the same lines, but obviously uh, they will eat dairy products and such, and, and are less conscious about clothes, fashion side of it, and other kind of items or animal byproducts, I guess, really. Uh, pescatarian or pescatarian? Yeah, she does. Yeah, they they a vegetarian eat. lifestyle that eats fish. Squiddy in freaks. They will eat. They will eat fish or fish products. What if I was to say to you a flexitarian? What's a flexitarian? Are you someone who most mostly tries not to eat it, but will occasionally eat meat? I suppose special occasion, like. Well, in in my in my case, it's it's like. If I can, if I can go somewhere and, and not choose the option, then I will choose it. But if options are somewhat limited, then I, I'll be less conscious about not having meat on the plate at the moment. That's kind of that's kind of where I'm at with it, really. I mean, feel free to pick that apart, but um, that's where I'm personally at with it at the moment. Uh, that's that's what I'm going for, to be honest. It's like I'll, I'll eat meat, but you know, if I don't have to, then I won't. That's sort of uh, where I'm sort of at with it I guess like I've stopped eating or tried to stop eating meats as like a sort of snack as I used to yeah. eat like you know the chicken trays and pepper armies and that stuff so like for the last week and a bit I've tried to cut it down I have cut it, well, I have cut it down I haven't eaten any meat for over a week now so I got um I got some I was given some very harsh advice yeah, so it was like just do it there's no need there's no try you just stop it really is you just you stop from Star Wars <laughs> no, do or do not. There is no try. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking right though. It's not a vegan, but like it is literally as easy as that. I did vegetarianism because I was afraid that being a vegan, I would fail. I it'd be too hard. But like literally, just stop eating meat. Job done. It is as easy as that. Never looked back. It is literally just just don't eat meat. I I haven't had an issue. Um, sort of like I said last week or so eating meat uh, not eating meat rather i think the one time where i kind of went oh fuck i really i really want that was when i went to get a yogurt out of the fridge and there was like a open packet of chicken pakora bits and i pulled them out and chucked them on top and as i did i just got a waft of them i was like that smells fucking glorious like but that was the only time that i've kind of gone oh, i really want meat every other time like i ordered a, a vegetarian Domino's for the first time in my life the other day and right. it was the first Come time on. I've eaten a whole pizza, a whole medium pizza to myself in years. I haven't been able to do that for, for ages. I normally just have like four different meats on it and just fucking go ham. Like. But uh, go yeah. ham. Nice. All the time working nights, they're, they're really good. Um, it just seems like a, I don't know, I had a similar issue when I went vegetarian instead of full vegan. Like I felt that was kind of half assed, but like, I feel like with with stop stop and eating meat, you just stop or you you don't stop. You know, I guess some people would say it's better just to you know do what you can when you can. Everyone's doing your bit, but like it's kind of like a, a pat on the back, I think, for a lot of people who want to be involved in the movement without actually really being involved in it. Like, and I feel the same because I'm not vegan. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I have this eternal battle every couple of months. And it's been quite a lot recently because we've been bringing up all this, all this research on veganism, and I watched that yeah. horrible film, and uh, you know, just interviewing people and stuff, and it's reminded me of all the reasons why I went vegetarian, 
like cop out vegan in the first place and now i'm just like you know, you know i need to uh, be a vegan I'm, you shouldn't be a flexitarian you should go just do it go vegetarian who's to say where you shouldn't shouldn't and i'm not and no nobody it's just like that's so i just kind of like someone says flexitarian and i'm just like oh really <laughs> you know it's, it's fucking pointless that just means like i eat whatever i want when i want like and i just happen to eat less meat um i don't know do, i don't like all these think... different labels i don't like pescatarian either it's a fucking stupid word but that's just me do you think it means yeah. that they they have the full knowledge that they know what they're doing is wrong but they still choose to do it anyway yeah i think so i think it's like you you yeah, you, yeah, um, you you know everything that goes on and all the horrible shit that it's still in, too inconvenient for you to to change and that's i'm just as guilty of that because i should be a vegan and i'm not because i'm too lazy because i would basically like my main diet now is fucking cheese basically like you know cheese banging up cheese is great <laughs> like it's the, that's the same as going bacon for do you know what i mean it's just yes, like, it's, 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 it's a and i'm conscious. arguing it you are conscious you are conscious that you are eating meat on this occasion Normally you wouldn't eat meat, but on this occasion you were conscious you are eating meat and fully aware of the process, where where your food has come from, and on this occasion you are making the choice to eat meat. I I believe that's more of a flexitarian approach. I, I couldn't pick up a burger. I couldn't put it in my mouth. Couldn't do it. Would never do. It. You give me a million pounds and I wouldn't eat a fucking cheeseburger. But it's like I need to get like that with cheese and eggs and you know I don't read. Really you just stuff. had a kid though. Yeah, yeah, I know, but maybe not a million pounds. <laughs> <laughs> right, a substantial you amount of money. yourself going the full vegan within, you know, the next few months, definitely. It's difficult, though, because, like, if I go full vegan, then the whole household goes full vegan. And, like, no disrespect to Joe, she done, she, she's a, she's a meat eater. She doesn't want to go full vegan, like, because she's basically a vegetarian because she lives with me. You know what I mean? Like, it isn't, you know, you don't, you're not going to cook two meals, you know. I don't you know think I mean? that's necessarily true, though, Sean. I think people can live in the same house and not have, like, one could be vegan, one could be vegetarian. I think that's wholly possible. That's possible. But when one's a meat eater and the other one's a vegan, I think that's specifically difficult. Um, well, yeah, well, that, no, we, we argue all about, we yeah, argue, we argue about like, takeaways and stuff. Say again, sorry. A different towards a vegetarian and a vegan, you mean, like? Yeah, so if I went, like, I'm vegetarian now. There's quite a lot of things I can't eat, obviously. It's really doing, like, takeaways or whatever. I, you know, it, it makes it fucking difficult. To, again, perspective. This is, you know, this means nothing. But, like, it just makes things difficult. And then when doing meals, you're not going to do, like, a one meat meal and then one, like, vegetarian meal. Nine times out of ten, it would just both find a bar a vegetarian meal. But when you go vegan and you restrict that again, substantially, like, when it's someone who doesn't want that, that makes uh, that makes it quite difficult. Like it's not just again, like, no disrespect. It's like shopping her, like, and everything. Just... No, no, you'd have to buy like two of everything, like like so, so, a milk, you know, and a uh, fucking. Uh, it's the only thing I can think of, but but milk, you know, <laughs> like two milks. I I have a really interesting point to make, actually, Sean. Um, in term in terms of, you know, a, a child's diet. When obviously when you when you're bringing up the child now. You know, obviously, when he gets a bit older, start eating more adult kind of food. What would what would you your response be then in terms of 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 what you'd feed what you'd feed him? Like in terms, you know, obviously yourself would wouldn't eat the meat diet, but would you kind of enforce them views upon the child then, or perhaps, or who can't really make their mind up if they don't eat meat? They don't really know what is what, do they? They don't know what they eat then. Yeah, how does that? Uh, I mean... I've always wondered how um, a child of a vegan or vegetarian kind of how that how that happens, how that goes about normally. I don't know, man. I, I don't know if it's like wrong to force your beliefs on your child. I think That's it is. Think, yeah. I think, yeah. um, it's like a religion, isn't it? Well, is it like uh, forcing a religion on a child? Yeah, I don't. It, it, the kid's gonna be a meat eater. Like, there's no argument there. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I don't know enough about nutrition and stuff to to argue the fact that like, yeah, this the kid's gonna be vegetarian. Um, I think it's. I think it's a case of, of perhaps. When the child is old enough, though, like just explaining a little bit, perhaps where the food yeah, comes yeah. from. I'm, I'm eventually like it's gonna, you know, we're talking years and years. But it's gonna be like, why doesn't Daddy eat the same food as I eat? You know, it was me and you, Mum, or whatever. So it's probably it's gonna come up eventually. Yeah, we're talking said, mate, a long uh, way in the future. <laughs> my father was a vegetarian for eleven years. Uh, my mother ate, ate eleven meat. years. 
Yeah, he I, thought was, he was way, I thought he was way longer than that. Uh, well, but as long as I know, it was, it was eleven years. Like, um, yeah. He stopped. He started eating meat again when I was about, I don't know, seventeen. Say, I remember, um, yeah. I can't really remember any disputes in the house about about meals or or anything like that. To be fair, like, hmm. yeah. I mean, it, it won't be a dispute. It's just a convenience thing, you know. It's just if I'm vegan, it just makes everything that much more difficult. If I was single, it'd be so much. Yeah, um, but we say that about a lot of things, can you? But I don't know. This is something I'm currently dealing with in my head at the moment, like because I want to eventually go that way, uh, and I'm doing exactly what I'm telling you. Is it just do it? You know, when <laughs> I'm not, I'm not doing it. Like I'm still eating fucking just do it. shit. Just do it. I think. Yeah. Like, so that's total ramble off the flexitarian thing. There, I can only apologise. In terms of raising a kid, though, I, I honestly, in regards to anything, this could be uh, sort of diet, religion, all that stuff. You let the kid decide when he's old enough or she's old enough whether they want to pursue that, you know, whether they want to be a vegan, a vegetarian, or yeah. whatever. I think, you know, people shouldn't be influenced through through their whole lives, essentially. Like if, if you're you're born and you know, throughout your entire life your parents are vegan and they feed you a vegan diet all the way through. Um, I would guarantee I know that you know, a lot of vegans say, Oh, you don't need supplements and all this stuff to to have a vegan diet but as a child you need certain nutritions and i think not all of them would come under the vegan banner to my knowledge i could be wrong i think they they do but it'd be difficult to get a child to eat them you know (laughs) (laughs) it's a nice green screen but it was all right (laughs) <laughs> motivation that it's taught us that's motivation for us to change our ways, I think. <laughs> Definitely. How does it work with your, your, your sister and her uh, husband? Is it husband or boyfriend? Husband. husband right? Yeah, he's, sorry. He's not <laughs> vegan or he's just a vegetarian. Yeah, but they they have a child, right? Yeah. Well, she eats meat. So the child is the media, yeah? Yeah. It's like um, Karin was sort of a vegetarian by accident, essentially, um, just because it was easier. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's exactly what it's like here. But like oh. with um with with Gwen, it's kind of just you know the sort of fish fingers, chicken nuggets, or the kids' food, it's kids' food, you know. So she buys that. That's just because it's easy. It's easy and cheaper, I guess, than having to consciously do that. But Dave, Dave isn't fussy. He he, he does, doesn't really bother him that you know they eat meat at all. So it's not too bad. I think um, there are other members of the family that are far stricter. When it comes to that, and they are vegan, so they'll it'll be you know checking the food is vegan. And because I remember one one uh, birthday, Gwen's birthday last year, there was Corinne done like two sides of the table, which was separate, and she had little flags in each of them to say which one was vegan, which one wasn't. Um, so good idea, man. Good, it was a good idea, yeah. Um, yeah. And there's no there's no issue with that. I mean, you know, she's just catering for everyone, but it's you know some people have more. I would say militant, I guess is the right word with it. And I know people that are militant with it. So, Well, I do think that it's a case of when the child is old enough, though, perhaps maybe explain it a little about yeah. where they feel it come from, perhaps. I think I think that's probably where a lot of, maybe they will, maybe they won't agree, but I think perhaps a lot of people would agree with that. Oh, McDonald had a farm and he strung up all the pigs. <laughs> Yeah, this is it. I got all these books on like cows and chickens and animals and shit, like farm books and you know all these like kids books. And it's like, well, when you turn the page and you see the fucking slaughterhouse, it doesn't happen, does it? You know, no. it's just I don't know. I don't like the idea of my my own child eating meat, but like I've only been a dad for three weeks. I don't know what the fuck I'm going to deal with. It. It's, it's a short answer. <laughs> no <laughs> of course, that's like... yeah, some to think about. Oh, definitely. Um, you know how? Oh how yeah, you want to... definitely. Like how you want to explain that kind of lifestyle, you know, when the child is is old enough to understand what's going on, definitely. Yeah, fuck yeah. knows, man. I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. Like I'm hardly a spokesperson for for animal rights, like you know. Like I'm yeah. I'm not a vegan for a start. <laughs> I like, you know, I'm I'm not that clued up on things. It's only because we've been researching a lot of stuff now for the cast that I'm it's all kind of fresh in my head. Um. Like I said, recently, I've just been reminded of why I stopped eating meat. So it's kind of like come full circle, really. But yeah, I'll stop talking. I'll let someone else do some talking. So which moves me up by next topic, actually. Um, 
obviously very, very conveniently around the time of me researching this, a program aired on the BBC called Veganville, uh, <laughs> which was for the benefit of the tape and people watching, it was actually set in the town of Merthyr Tidville, which is where Richard Sean and Tom are from. So it was extremely relevant. Um, did it, did any of us catch that at all? Yep. So, yeah, so a bit of it, a little bit. What, yeah, what, do, what, do we make, what do we make of that? I really Basically, enjoyed it. The, the premise of the show was a group of people they've never met before. They were all somewhat involved in the vegan community. More particularly, uh, Joey Cobstrong, was, who was somewhat of a, famous vegan activists and whatnot. So they were sent to Merthyr to basically try and spread the message of uh, veganism, if you will. Um, yeah, so that was it, basically. And Merthyr was picked because it's going to be one of those places where it's very resistant to such thoughts. Change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, any any sort of change, yeah. like, you know. They couldn't um, have I don't know, I think there's a lot, of, a lot of places a lot worse than Merthyr for that. Definitely, like Merthyr is changing, like it or not. But um, yeah, like you, you, if you've seen, if you saw the, obviously you know what I'm talking about. People like, eh, no, I, I don't want to stop eating meat. I love eating meat. You know, just people like that. Food, you, know, you, know, you can't do, huh? Rabbit food. I can fucking say, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. But like, what the, if I, if I'm telling you. That meat isn't aggravating in my goat. You are you are no limb as well, don't you? That you fucking know. spaz, right? He's talking about um stopping eating like what is it like nuts and pulses aggravate his goat? He's like he's stopping eating red meat is gonna not make him as healthy. Like he's the a round he's a big round boy, like he's clearly like <laughs> down in all the pork pies, like, like you know what I mean? He's a typical greasy cunt you see in a butcher shop at nine in the morning queuing up down the fucking street like in your local butcher do you go down the like, butcher on it no you don't go to the butchers but say you go to butchers in your village i got butchers in my village you got one near you haven't you rich I you get old people queuing like all the way down the fucking street pre-covid pre-covid outdoor queuing oh my god i get my pound of fucking agis <laughs> you know one of those types like yeah. but he eats fucking sausages by the fucking truckload um i mean that, that <laughs> fellow was just un- unnecessarily Wound up and aggressive, really. I, th- I think I would a lot be surprised of them... if he was a paid actor by the BBC, spice it up like, a bit. Yeah, like, he just like flies he off the handle for <laughs> no reason <laughs> whatsoever. It, it was it was a direct eye contact as well to the camera. It was it was the people looking in. You know, you want to make me look a clone? You know, it was. Yeah, because that Joey Carbstrong guy is um that Joey Carbstrong guy is quite forward with you know the activism side of veganism. Yeah, he's sure, in yeah. people's faces a lot, and he's really like. But he doesn't actually say anything to that guy, and that guy just flipped out. You know what I mean? He doesn't yeah, like yeah. confront him. Yeah. Like, you yeah. think yeah. it's all right that the animals are in these fucking slaughterhouses? He doesn't say anything like that. He's just talking no, about no, no, nuts, no, 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 no. and the guy just fuck goes crazy. He's trying to calm. He's trying to calm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I think I think that was a lot. That was a lot of the group's conflict. So within the show, because they obviously put them all together to work as a team, and I think where he his his it was a very much hands on activism side of approach whereas the other ones were more kind of like educating people yeah. perhaps and things and i think it clashed a little bit then I and think... i know that they angered they angered a lot of farmers then which they originally they had on board they originally had farmers on board to talk to and interview and talk to things about kind of like we do ourselves really right now and um i know that they angered a lot of the farmers by um by some of the stuff they were doing and that's when they had to bring in uh Matt Pritchard then from uh, Dirty Sanchez to try and calm the situation. I will, say, I will say one thing on Vegan Phil, and then I'll let someone else talk because I feel like I'm talking loads. They keep saying in that show that Wales, maybe, or not so much Wales, but Merthyr, we're steeped in farming. Farming is our community, farming is our industry. Is it fuck? That's just not true. Like, there's no farms around here. Maybe there's some up on the mountain tops, like, but functional, like, livestock farms or whatever no, you call no, them. Like, I know what the, exactly yeah what we've the got, fuck what, got where, please tell me someone tell me where are the farms in merthyr i tell you where the slaughterhouse is i can't tell you where the fucking farms are exactly, yeah i think that's the misconception here though um that they were they were confusing the fact that we've got a lot of sheep farms um with fully functioning um especially sending to slaughter food plants etc they were very much so confusing now, I think. Yeah, but um, to the point where I they mean, say, like, everyone knows a farmer, like, it's, it's like they, they make it, you know, like the, the mines used to be. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Do you know yeah. what they, they yeah, say? Like, yeah. uh, it's a completely integral and, like, integrated with your community. It's not. 
there are farms, don't get me wrong, I'm over-exaggerating, but to the point where like they're like it's the complete livelihood of this entire valley. It's not true. Absolutely not true well, at all. Maybe maybe more, more, um, years ago, but not now. No, no. Small scale not. farm, like like our friend who, who we've spoken to, Harry's farm. Then that's a perfect example. Like, like a small scale kind of. There's a few, you know, of them. A few animals. A couple of them, yeah. I think uh, like one thing I sort of took from Veganville was, like you said, with uh, Joey Carbstrong, his approach was very activist driven, and like you know, look at they're doing in the slaughterhouses and all this. And then the others were kind of just more educating them on health benefits and how easy it is to do rather than difficult than people think. And I think the best approach was the other people trying because they went for, you know, appeal to people's stomachs. You always yeah, go to people's yeah. taste. You make the food and then give it to them and they go, oh, that's nice. And you go, oh, yeah, that's vegan. And then they're like, oh, really? That tastes really the good. The burger van, perfect example. The burger they, van set. Yeah, the burger van, yeah. They and, all liked it and they all, they all loved it in fairness. They all absolutely loved it. And then they were like, oh, that's vegan. And they're like, oh, is that, you know, but, but they enjoyed it. They, they went around right. different. I can guarantee you, because when they went to Merthyr Football Club and they gave out those burgers, they gave them out. They didn't sell them. If they, had sold, free, those, yeah, if they had sold those burgers, right, and after they had paid, the people had paid £2.50 for this burger, and they bit into it, and then, you know, they said, oh, yeah, it's quite nice. And then the guy went, that's a vegan burger. They want, they'll go, fucking give me my money back. Oh, absolutely, you know? yeah. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. That would have happened 100%. Doesn't it doesn't really make sense, though, does it? That, that, it would happen, but it... it it doesn't, doesn't make no, sense. I know. Yeah, it doesn't make sense, but that's that's the sort of mentality we have in the valleys. Essentially, that you know, like Sean says, they're they're afraid to change, and anything that sort of goes against what we are now, um, even if it's you know a positive, which you can see, people will fight fight it to the death, like to, to not have it. Yeah, <laughs> but that's that's just that's just a, a Welsh valleys thing. I mean, you know. Look, look at politics. I'm not going to delve into it, but look at politics. I mean, ever since Thatcher closed down the mines, the Tories have never had a look in, in the valleys. Apart, well, apart from the last election, but we won't talk about that. But you know, um, <laughs> it's, that's just Wales, though. Fucking whatever. Yeah, we have a heartlands. Yeah. Very interesting show, though. That Veganville. Very. Uh... Definitely worth a watch. I'd say it's, it's certainly for people who live in Wales. I'd say, you know, give it a watch. Um, interesting. I'm just spotting on the local places. There's a cool look. There's the barbers. Yeah. There's that. There's this, you know. It's, I, literally, yeah. I literally knew everywhere where they went. Like everywhere oh, on screen, yeah. I, I could I could recognize. Because most yeah. of them were really far away from me. So, You know, yeah. that fella as well, right? Because I'm not too versed on it. He was on his goat. I always <laughs> thought the fucking. A lot of like red meat consumption would uh, would aggravate that more than uh, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> this is why it's so funny. It's just like what the fuck, like <laughs> you would bloody tell him. Yeah, that's what exactly why it's funny. That makes sense. Yeah. Rich man's disease they used to call it, innit? Yeah, it's like it was yeah. only you know the rich people who used to eat all the fancy meats. Well, only the the shit meats. Like the rich people food is just like arseholes and eyeballs, innit? You know what I mean? The caviar. Oh, it is, yeah, 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 it is. It is a lot of like, like foie gras. It's like exploded fucking goose livers or something. You know caviar. what I mean? It's like caviar's eggs, yeah. yeah. Um, caviar's fish eggs, row or row. I think row or caviar might be slightly different class of fish egg. Um, and they dye them all different colours, or maybe they just come different colours. I, I don't know. We used to buy it in work when I was catering. And we'd have like bright orange caviar and like purple caviar. Apparently, like um, it's fucking disgusting. Tastes terrible. Yeah, apparently salmon eggs are like super good for you, though. Salmon eggs probably are. They probably follow fucking omega three and shit, don't they? You know. Remember but, that thing uh... Homer had? We had to cut it just perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that restaurant, Chinese restaurant, possibly. Is... Uh, uh... that? That was on the other day. Classic actually, Simpsons. Well. Classic. Sim- I want season twenty-one now. And the quality is is bad. Like it's atrocious. All maple uh... products everywhere, is it? No, yeah, no Maple yet. Bart's no. just got a cell phone now. A cell yeah. phone? Oh, that's the end of it. Internet, it's... eh? What series was that? Internet, eh? That's quite old, that is. I reckon that's season 9, 10, maybe a bit younger than that. I don't know. Nice. It would have been mid-90s. So that's... Yeah, so season 9 was 1997. That's when The Simpsons died. Yeah, it's been about that, yeah. I want to talk to you about my field work if, uh, if, I, if I could. Right on, son. In the run-up, 
to this particular cast. I did quite a bit of field work, i.e., I spoke to a lot of vegan and vegetarian friends. Uh, there was a series of questions that I asked, um, which I'll, I'll run through if uh, if that's okay with you guys. Yeah, um, so two things I wanted to know. Um, one of them being, what's their general thoughts um, on fast food companies now um, basically starting to offer such project, uh, products? Sorry, I mean, as I said, the, the thought of a vegan stepping foot into a KFC in the first place, I, I find really strange. Um, it's obviously associated with chickens and, and, and bad practice of keeping of and, you know, environmental issues and whatnot as well. So, I mean, when when I saw that, I was like, well, surely a vegan wouldn't be anywhere near a KFC. So that was one question. Uh, another was, what are the reasons for choosing to live a meat-free and cruelty-free lifestyle? Um, I asked things, how long have they been one, for example? Um, do they think they are humans are um, humans are, are meant or, or and designed to eat meat? That was another one. Um, a lot of different things. Um, how easy do they find being a vegan or vegetarian in everyday life? And um, various topics like that. I got I got a few good few little um, answers from some people. Well, um, the KFC thing though, I'm surprised that the people you asked they they seem pretty cool with it, like. Yeah, 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 definitely. It was anyway, yeah, that, that kind of shocked me a bit, to be honest. I thought on principle alone, it would uh, it piss them off, like. No, but su surprisingly, um, the overall kind of verdict on the KFC thing wasn't as negative as I was expecting it to be. Um, maybe because I've talked to people who are not so maybe perhaps full on in terms of the uh, vegan attitude, but... It wasn't as negative as I thought it'd be. Um, I mean, I thought I spoke to a good friend, Andy Brunton, now. Andy is a very talented photographer and an extremely good friend and supporter of the Steelcast. And I mean, he said that he wouldn't step for the new KFC ever. Um, he's probably the only one who said something negative on it or anything. But um, Andy, for example, um, he, he doesn't eat meat for health reasons. So that's his, his reason around it. And he said that um, the fact that veganism is now probably more popular than ever um it's actually made it a lot easier for him to get certain foods and more accessible and stuff like that so that was that was his approach on it and um he also said that he um he spent some time out in india i think he said three months just looking through my note i have got notes by the way yeah he spent three months out, out in india once and he was saying that um basically most of that country if not all of that country doesn't eat meat so um he found that extremely easy and i mean as I was saying, it's a lot more easier than it's ever been now. So that was um, that was his little um, uh, bit of feedback on it. Yeah. yeah, with India, it's is because um, like British curry is incredibly different to Indian curry, isn't it? Is this a lot? It's mainly a veg vegetable based curries in India, whereas opposed to Britain, where you've got like all your korma, tikka masala, and all that. Yeah. Also, that's all British inventions. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's, that's it's right. Like like a British Chinese is, yeah, it's just chips and fucking curry. Yeah. Like, you know? yeah. like a, um, um, uh, we have the big huge chicken balls of like battered chicken balls. You we wouldn't have that over there, would you? Oh, oh. Big, and you, you don't get that. That's not Chinese. Like right. a baby alligator or something. No, we, a lot of this uh, tradition. You know, it depends on what regions of India, doesn't it? A lot of yeah, like yeah. certain parts of India, due to like I think it's really I'm going to say yeah. religion rather than regional differences. Yeah, well, oh. a, a lot, yeah. The cow is sacred in India. It's a sacred but, animal. Um, that's and then when he pig is um swine. This yeah. yeah. That does mean some Indian restaurants, some of the more like authentic or ones with more extensive menus do have some incredible um vegetarian options. I went we went um when, in my previous job, we went for a Christmas do to an Indian restaurant in Cowbridge. Cowbridge, yes, very good. Um and uh it was fucking it was the the vegetarian selection of food that they had like just blew me away like um and they were all like three or four quid for these little dishes i can't even remember what they were but they were so good like everyone had these like mains so like everyone had like a curry and like a rice and a naan so that's like 15 quid if not more and i had like fucking five plates of uh, <laughs> different vegetarian foods and everyone was like fucking hell mate how much have you spent and i was like probably less than you um <laughs> but um it was fucking it was amazing i can't even remember the name of the place to plug it um, but yeah, it's the same with um, the, the Indian we order from a lot. Um, Red Spice, shout out to Mifted for Red Spice. Whoop whoop, they got a lot of banging uh, 
banging vegetarian food, not vegan, vegetarian. Um, pretty much everything Indian takeaway is right off vegan because it got like um. Oh, my sister told me what it was. Is it ghee? G? Yeah. Ghee? Yeah. Though that is that some sort of animal thing? I'm not sure. Um, I'm not too uh, sure. To be honest, I know it's used in like nearly every curry though. Yeah. Good anyway, time. yeah, rambling out about Indian food. <laughs> yeah, it's also else? Chinese yeah. up, but Chinese at the top of uh, Murphy Magic Walk. That they have a whole vegetarian, like they do pretty much any Chinese meal you can get. A second of Chinese meal, any Chinese meal you can get from there, they can do it with tofu. It's with vegetarian. Um, but uh, but no, it's not vegan. That's another thing. Sorry. Um, Continue. Andy was saying though that um, like when he when he started out, you know, I think he said he was twenty five. Yeah, he was. He was twenty five when he, he became a vegetarian. He was saying that back then, pretty much, he could he, he could only just live off like sandwiches and like chips and stuff, basically. And you know, it's it's far different now. It's far more accessible and um, and far more easier. So I mean, in terms of the vegan veganism, where is that now? Um, I think that's has helped somebody with. Uh, the health side of things of, of not wanting to eat meat, at, at least definitely. Yeah. Definitely, but definitely. It's far more accessible these days. It's far more popular as well, you know. You get all the celebrities that are spoken about being vegetarian or vegan. So, you know, when when you get, like, sort of prominent figures spoken about it, that's that's when it starts getting traction and people follow it. Trend starters, yeah. 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 But, you know, there's, there's also, like, the Joaquin Phoenix, he was... Um, he was arrested at a climate change rally. I know it's this kind of a uh, bit off topic, but he's like a prominent uh, uh, vegan. Yeah, he done that that documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he, did, yeah he did. He got yeah, a, arrested at that uh, climate change rally that he fucking <laughs> flew a jet to. I mean, the, the hypocrisy of these uh, celebrities is a bit annoying. That's, um, that's actually strongly worth a watch, I suppose, as well. If if anyone is really really wanted to make a, a big life change and you know question themselves even that um that earth range is probably one one of the things to watch it covers um it's not just like slaughter houses and stuff it covers like man's relationship with animals uh completely so it's like from pets to you know um even just you know the more like green pc type stuff like whaling and fucking you know uh seal clubbing and all that shit so basically it covers Basically, I don't know. It, it says that it covers man's relationship with animals, but it basically, to me, just showed you all the, all the horrible things that man does to animals. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, is, there's a segment later on. I won't I won't spoil it too much, but we have a couple of guests on here, and there's a segment where Earthlings is is gone into a bit, and it's recommended to us to watch before this podcast. Um, I give it a watch this morning because I had an hour or so to do it, and. Um, yeah, it's pretty horrible. Like, it's just, you know, a lot of confrontational footage. It's a lot of the stuff that in Veganville, for example, they, some of the people in Veganville want to confront people with this type of stuff, with this type of footage. And I think that's the best way to um, enlighten people to, to, you know, these type of things is to show them the reality. Like, um, as um, as Charles Manson said, like, the truth is in your slaughterhouses. Um, and it is. It's like, this is, this is what you don't, really see and now um is it didn't really you know it's just depressing watching all these animals die constantly but um you know if you can make it to the end <laughs> and still decide to eat meat then i am biased here but if you can watch it to the end and then still eat meat then you're a, you're, a, oh. you're a stronger person than me i watch out before the episode <laughs> it's, uh, I've, it's, I spoke, it's i spoke to someone here's a turn around for you um i spoke to someone um rich will remember stephanie she took photos for the lemba lions once now, um, she used to be a vegetarian, but now she fully eats meat, anything. And um, she basically said that that was through traveling, though, that um, she started trying some, like, seafood, fish, etc. And then, before you know it, um, including a trip to Japan. I'm just looking through some of my notes. Trip to Japan, she went yeah, to a Pokemon Centre, actually. Apparently, there's a Pokemon Centre. Had a Pokemon burger, never looked back, basically. And that was the end of uh, <laughs> her... What was it, Pikachu meat or something? <laughs> Yeah, that was one little story. Um, she was the only person I spoke to who'd made the switch from shocking, vegetarian to... Well, my father eats meat now. Oh, he's another one then. There we go. Why, why did he switch back from? Uh, 
Was it something to do with the doctor? It was something to do with blood sugar, I think. I don't quote me. I'm not too sure. Maybe he just decided to park. You know, just it was too much pain in the ass. Maybe. <laughs> I know that he started being a pescatarian first, though, and then like gradually moved his way into into that, like right, into right. full full reed and meat. But it was all to do with uh, his vegetarianism. Was to do with like the texture of it. It wasn't really any like conscious decision. It was just that like, he didn't like how it felt when he was eating it. Okay. Hmm. I can agree with you there. <laughs> you don't often you don't often find many people who've done the opposite way of the switch around or the transition. Well, that's that's pretty interesting, I find. Most people are more conscious about it, though, like you know, the cruelty and all that. But you know, it, that didn't really come into play there. I don't think. I think it dep- yeah, it depends on. There's a lot of different reasons isn't it, why people don't eat meat, so or consume animal products, whichever way you want to put it. So, like, it depends on the person, like, and, you know, and why you're doing it. Yeah, I I fucking love don chicken doner kebabs. One of the best things ever fucking made. Like, you know. Deep South fried chicken, lobster, with butter sauce, death to America. You know, it's that's <laughs> that's fucking amazing. Like, but that that in the point, really. Now, now to the point where like it just makes me nauseous looking at it. It's weird, isn't it? It's weird how things change. Like, it's yeah. strange. That's where I'm at the start, though. But like, uh, changes the way you think. I mean, a couple of years ago, you wouldn't have thought twice about it. But no, it's... Ah, fuck no. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I remember going to obscene extreme, which is um, they don't allow meat on 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 site. This it's like when Morrissey plays a festival. You know? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But like obscene extreme, no meat for the entire festival. And um, I was one of the people that would go off the festival site and go to a restaurant to have food. You know, to like have some fucking meat. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, um. Yeah. I would, I would never even dream of doing that now. Obviously. But like, yeah, that's it was like. So weird not eating meat for like uh, the first year I went, I I you know, I didn't eat meat for five days. I was just like, this is so strange. Like <laughs> um Yeah. But uh, I sometimes go like a week without even thinking about yeah, uh, like, you know, it just food's just food to me. Like I'm I'm not conscious about it, but uh sometimes I will just, just not have meat for like a week and by accident, really, if anything. <laughs> I'm sure there's been times where I've gone maybe a week without, without realizing, like you said, cause, yeah, I eat a lot of fruit. I, I love fruit, so I eat tons of fruit and stuff like that. So it's 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 probably I think veget I think vegetarian is probably easier than being well, it is easier than being a vegan in my eyes anyway. Oh That's yeah, definitely. <laughs> you know, it's when you can accidentally just fall into being a vegetarian, like <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I, I spoke to I spoke to a lass from the US actually. I put a couple of shout outs on social media, um, Twitter, Facebook, etc. And um a young lady from a uh from a hardcore band actually in New York called Senseless, she got in touch with me as well. Now she said that in the US they don't actually have the um the vegan burger they had. Well, not permanently at least. There was apparently being trialed in, in certain locations. Whether that's changed now, I'm not sure. Well, the impossible oh, KFC. burger. What's that? Sorry, the Impossible Meat Burger. Uh, is that what it's called over there? I think you're referring to the KFC one, aren't you? Yeah, the uh, KFC. Yeah, the Impossible Meat it... Burger. It's it's not just fast food, though. All oh, oh, right, you Gareth's referring to it. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, Impossible Whoppers, I think, isn't it? Impossible is yeah. like a brand, isn't it? I think of, yeah. of meatless. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the the burger the Burger King burger is cooked on the exact same grill as as the um. That's the meat one, to my knowledge, though. Am I correct? Yeah, I had this problem with the, the Burger King. They did a vegetarian burger, the halloumi burger, deep fried halloumi. Um, so I had a few of those in my time, um, especially working nights and stuff. And then yeah, I remember reading a poster once that says at the bottom, like, <laughs> it's not actually huh? meat free. It's all fried in the same thing. You know, What's it's all fried in the fat of the. Just fucking it, reels people in, doesn't it? Zero Always. point in advertising it as, as like vegetarian, because it isn't. <laughs> Yeah, no, no. <laughs> no. false did, like anything. I know, I know, all say, I know they say at the bottom is not, but it's false advertising all the same because in big bold letters is vegetarian burger, and then like the tiny small print in the corner with the asterisks, just like actually, nah, it's not. Yeah, 
yeah, you know? it's like it's still yeah. it's prepped in same fryer as meat products. I'm like, yeah, there we go. That's like probably like ninety percent of your fam, you know, your potential uh, customer base is uh, is no longer interested. Yeah, <laughs> well, boys, down the show's order, they're reading it at the end of the day, you know, it goes right back to the start. So this is the uh, the explanation of the episode title. Um, what was your reaction like, Sam? When 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 he was like, um, oh, the chip scene. What, what was your reaction like? Um, more of like fuck's sake. Because <laughs> 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 they go like, because we went to the drive through right? This is pre coronavirus. I was like, well, I've got to try one of these fucking KFC burgers. Just give it a go. My sister said it was amazing. So I was like, let's give it a go. And uh, we went up there. Joe had the whatever, like Colonel Colonel's meal, Colonel's meal. And um, like I had, I'll have the vegan burger meal or whatever the fuck it's called. Um, what drink do you want with us, sir? And we're like, Coke, Pepsi, whatever the fuck. Go around to the other side, pay the bloke, gives me a fucking burger, and then he gives me a coke, and then he's just like staring at me. And I was like, Where's it where's the chips? And he goes, There's no chips. Chips aren't vegan, he said. <laughs> it's just like, well, they're fucking potatoes, you know what I mean? <laughs> but um he's like, Yeah, the chips are fried in with like all the burgers and stuff, so they're not vegan. And I was like, Wait, I'm I'm not worried about it. I'm a vegetarian. I don't care. Can I have some chips? He's like, yeah, you got to go round and, and pay oh. again. So I get queued again. I thought I said, fuck it up. I can't be asked. Um, so you end up paying a fiver like for a fucking burger and a Coke. It's, it's ridiculous. But um, yeah, that's the, that's the inspiration behind the episode title. That's it, though. I think the, um, the fast food companies and all that, they're not looking out for people's health or the animal welfare or anything. I think they're just profiteering off a new demographic you know, a new rising demographic and people seem to just be falling for it like you know they don't sit in their boardrooms and think oh what can we do to help these animals and they, they just like how can we make more money why aren't we catering to to these people why aren't we catering to these people and and yeah, vegan yeah. you know vegetarianism is is the next thing like I'll it's like a perfect big, example big, of this right oh, capitalism sorry. is in the coronavirus era we got now Face masks, branded face masks. That is the epitome of, yeah, yeah. you know, you know, these are something that should be handed out to people for safety reasons. And yeah, people are like fucking selling them with like Nike logo. That's not everything. There it is. Yeah. Even, even uh, non-branded though, non-branded ones, they cost a tenner for ten of them. It don't work really. Like, crazy, you know, isn't it? it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's extortion. Like you've got away one. Oh, by the way, they cost like fucking hundred quid. Yeah. Even Swans had a face mask, and I just commented on the Instagram, disappointed. Like, it's just, what do you kiss? Like, for fuck's sake, you know what I mean? You just sound like a Trump supporter, no, though. <laughs> Nothing it worse. Though, man. Nothing worse. Oh, it's like, fucking grow up, like, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, I get it. And it, it reminds me, like, the vegan, like, big companies, especially, like, chicken holocausters like KFC jumping on the, uh, vegan thing reminds me a lot of the big beer and how they reacted to craft beer i only bring that up because it's something we're all quite familiar with yeah you know they all want to they see this growing market of like people are moving away from their products to like the alternative you know what i mean and um they want to get in on that they want to cash in on it you know what i mean they want a piece of the pay that's all it is like it's all i see exactly would now be a good time to possibly um, mention the fact that also within my research, um, one of the people I spoke to was the Cardiff vegan junk food restaurant, Greasy Vegan. Who Good place. A little bit of a Q&A with us. Um, one of the first things that I asked them was just to introduce the company a bit. Tell us a bit about yourself at Greasy Vegan. My name is Will. I live in Cardiff and I've been a vegan for just over six years. Greasy Vegan is a junk food takeaway restaurant in Cardiff City Centre. You recreate popular junk food like burgers, fried chicken, doner kebabs, etc. We are coming up to our second year in our own premises. Pretty cool. That's cool, that's cool. Happy, happy anniversary on their second year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure when that will be. I'm guessing they'll probably post online when that will be, yeah. actually, no doubt. I would, I would imagine so, yeah. Yeah. What made you want to open a vegan-only business? One of our aims at Greasy Vegan is to show non-vegans, vegetarians, pescetarians, etc. that you can eat delicious and healthy regular food without the use of animal products. That's a pretty good message there. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's different, isn't it? You, you don't see many 
vegan only junk food places you know so no, it's, no, no. Uh, it's, 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 it's a good treat i guess you know it, I, like people say you know if, if i go vegan i can't eat this i can't eat that but yet here is a place that's offering all those sort I of think, things yeah um, i think a lot of people are under the under the you know impression they'd have to eat like beans and like you know plants and whatnot and yeah yeah we'll have to see something like that yeah are all of your staff vegan? Yeah, we have a full team. There are 13 of us, and we are all vegan. Yeah, at the time of writing these questions, um, didn't realise that was on their website, so sorry about asking <laughs> yeah. the question twice. Yeah. Uh, and, but yeah, um, it's on their website. I'm also, also thinking back to it, I didn't also want to kind of come across as, um, are they are they saying, we only employ vegans, you know, or, or any kind of prejudiced kind of... Um, so I, I I didn't want it to come across like that. Hopefully it hasn't. But, um, do you get many non-vegans that visit? Perhaps out of curiosity or open to the idea of trying? We probably get as many non-vegans as we do vegans. As my other aim was getting non-vegans to try our food and realising that it's not all healthy quinoa, chickpea and lentil based. It makes me really happy that they do. Yeah. <laughs> well, we know a few people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Plenty of people, plenty of people calling there. I assure you, plenty of people calling yeah. there that um, aren't even vegetarian. I think, <laughs> so, yeah. uh, which is nice, you know. It's yeah. good food. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which brings me to my next question: Have you witnessed many vegan conversions over the course of trading in Cardiff? I sure have, and it's been the greatest feeling and accomplishment to date. I've had several people message me on social media with things like. Just to let you know, your vegan double cheeseburger was the thing that finally made me go vegan. Knowing that we've been a major factor in a person's decision making makes me very proud of what we do. So that's cool as well. Yeah, uh, we can we can kind of relate to that sort of set. Whereas you know we've had people messaging us about the podcast, saying how much they enjoy it and all that stuff. Um, yeah. So that's very gratifying to us. So I can only imagine someone uh, messaging them saying you you know your restaurant made me turn vegan is that that must you know be a great feeling you're doing, to be you're doing something right <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah uh which funny enough ties me right into my next question what are your most popular sellers on the menu this tends to change from day to day inexplicably but the big mock comes in first the majority of the time our kebabs are flying up at the moment i'm not surprised though as they are delicious uh, i never tried the kebab there actually oh be interested Interesting. yeah eh? funnily enough i think when i've gone in it normally says it's sold out on the board so <laughs> that says it all really yeah yeah Just um they're saying that you know we're not in we're not in cardiff as often enough to uh to try oh. out it is kind of like a treat for us i guess <laughs> yeah. anyway. the, so. the bacon the the bacon cheeseburger thing um i've had a couple of times and, and the big mock was mentioned as well yeah, uh, I normally get cheese and chips from there as well. That's that's, that's fantastic. The, um, the cheese and chips as a go-to favorite. <laughs> um, would you say there is a stronger vegan presence in Cardiff within recent times? Most definitely. For a long time, Analoka was the only full vegan place to dine out, and Simply V was and still is a sanctuary for groceries. I think there are about eight vegan or plant-based places to eat out. I really hope we all make it through the lockdown period. There are a few vegan groups, some for animal rights, some for social meetups, and a very strong presence on social media. I think um, I, I, I noticed in recent years the this resurgence in veganism in South Wales in general. I think mainly because of some of the people we know, um, obviously uh, Becca Morgan, who's going to be part of this cast as well. Um, you know, people like that. Um, so. You know, we can see we can see a stronger presence as well. It's nice. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, you know, it's nice that it's happening. Um, it's good, good, good for them as well. Good for Greasy Vegan, obviously. <laughs> you know. What do you believe to be the main benefits of going vegan? The feeling of a clear conscience when you no longer consume animal products. There are health benefits, but I'm definitely the wrong person to be asking. I can go a week or longer without consuming any fruit or veg, unless chips count. <laughs> I, I find like I find that so bizarre. <laughs> I really do. It's like you know, you usually associate them with eating tons of fruit and veg. You know, people who are yeah. vegan, or vegetarian. It's uh, it's quite comical. Yeah. <laughs> For anyone thinking about going vegan, 
what advice would you give them? I experienced a certain panic for the first week or so, but once you realise you recognise the meals you're already eating, it's simple. A usual week for me would be sausage, mash and beans, spaghetti bolognese, Indian takeaway, kebab from Greasy Vegan, Sunday roast, Chinese takeaway, beans on toast. Substituting things for, for like butter, for flora butter, milk to almond milk, choosing different walkers, crisp flavours, etc. There are loads of guides online for accidentally vegan products. When new vegans see the list, you can see the joy and relief on their face. Things like Oreos, Pringles, Mr. Kipling, etc. are all accidentally vegan. Yeah, I've seen a few accidentally vegan stuff. Um, I look at that. Pot noodle? Well, certain pot yeah. noodles. Yeah. Always, yeah. always back to the pot noodle. Yeah, always back to pot noodle. One of the things I wanted to know is, is uh, how they've been corporate at the moment, basically. So I asked them, how have you been corporate during the lockdown period as a business and what are your plans for the future? We've carried on throughout the lockdown, reduced opening hours and reducing from seven days to five days a week and offering a home delivery service. I have an excellent team that have worked really hard throughout it all. We still don't know when we'll be allowed to have customers sitting inside yet. But from Monday, this is the time I go with the press, we will offer a customer collection service as well as home delivery. You know, that's obviously in place now. Just yeah. to clarify, they are currently offering a customer collection service as well as home delivery. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty good that they've managed to um, to do something during the lockdown because some businesses, some businesses haven't been as lucky, I guess. So yeah. that's really good for them. Glad of that. Definitely. We'll have to pop in as well soon, definitely, and say yeah, thanks. When when uh, when we're allowed out. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> definitely. But yeah, thanks. Thanks to Greasy Vegan for thanks Will yeah. for answering the questions. It was great. Huge thanks to Will for getting involved on that. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. So for the next segment of the cast, I'd like to introduce everyone to Becca Morgan. Now, for the benefit of those watching and listening, myself, Richard, and Tom. Uh, used all used to be in a band called Accolade Together a good few years back, of which Becca was our vocalist. And Becca's been a non-meat eat, non eater ever since I've known her, in fact, and I can always remember her uh, explaining to me for the first time that a pot noodle was vegetarian. So, yeah, she was one of the uh, first person I, spoke, I thought of when uh, I was putting this cast together in terms of guests. So you see us, Becca Morgan. Thank you very much. You've joined me and Richard here um, for our VegCast episode of the Steedcast. Uh, where we are focusing on veganism and vegetarianism. So I thought I'd uh, I thought I'd bring yourself into the mix as you're a bit more clued up on things than I am. And ironically as well, um, I can always remember, because we used to play in a band together for anyone watching, yeah. um, I can always remember that I, I first discovered that a pot noodle was vegan from your, a uh, vegetarian, sorry, from yourself as well. Because I saw you eating a pot noodle one day with chicken and mushroom. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, why are you doing eating the pot noodle? And he was like, oh, the vegetarian. I was like, whoa, no way. <laughs> so my mind was blown from that day ever forward. So <laughs> it's highly relevant um, highly relevant that I've got you on this podcast. Yeah, pot noodle revelation. Yeah, yeah, totally. I had no idea. And interestingly enough, the, is it, what do they call it? Do they call it like flaming hot? No, bad boy. The bit, the, the hot bad one. Bad. That was actually vegan as well. Um, oh, wait. So what what, yeah. what what ingredients I actually I actually have one here, funny enough. What are the ingredients that aren't vegan? There's milk in the chicken and mushroom. Uh, okay. Yeah, so that makes it obviously vegetarian but not vegan. I believe that the beef and tomato is also vegan. Bombay bad boy is vegan. Not that they label them, mind you. You do have to know yeah. read the ingredients. So it does say like May so tell us something. Though. What, what is what is their chicken made from then? In, in terms like of soya pieces. Mm. Ah. Yeah, it's like little bits of soya, so it's not actually chicken. So is it's milk it. is milk powder made from milk then, or is yeah, that? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Fair enough. Learn something new every day. Isn't it? Powdered. I'm still blown away by it all. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So do you want me to? Give it a go, give it a start. Yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself um, first. Okay, so as you guys said, obviously, um, started out being vegetarian when I was, I got into that when I was about 13, 12, 13. Um, so obviously that was quite young. What made, what made you want to get into it then at, at, at that age? Um, funnily enough, it's a really odd story. So I, 
I went to um, Kavartha High School or Kyle Murray Dunn, which is where um, I was at the time in the kind of second part of the school. And we, I studied, I was studying religious studies and we watched a video. So we were looking into how different cultures around the world, different religions, um, kind of incorporate and use animals in different ways. Um, so we looked at halal and we looked at um, kind of the factory farming industry in the UK um, and in other parts of the world as well. But it primarily focused on the on the kind of factory farmer in the UK. And I remember kind of not having that much knowledge about where my food came from up until that point. You know, I'd never even thought about it because you receive this kind of glossy product it's in a package it's already been cut up for you it doesn't really look like you know the animal that it came from anymore um and it's got all this you know labeling packaging and it's advertised in a different way so I've never made that connection up until that point and I watched this video and I I don't want to go into graphics too much you know like how graphic oh, it's fine absolutely or, fine um, because, you know, I understand that it's uncomfortable for some people, but I, it was the actual scene that I remember the most. Um, it was um, a chicken, you know, poultry farm. Yeah. And uh, they had them all kind of lined up on this conveyor belt and it was one after the other after the other. And it just seemed so kind of immoral and, you know, and just and just that it happens in seconds and it's not even you know this life is gone in seconds like that and obviously in the masses as well this mass production element of it being one after the other after the other and I just thought to myself can I justify morally my reasons for paying for that process to happen and I personally thought that I couldn't I couldn't justify it for myself um, so I stopped, I went home that day from school and I said to my mum, I was like, I'm not going to eat meat anymore. I can't eat meat. I can't eat fish. I can't eat, um, any animal products like that, you know, obviously at that point I continued to consume dairy and eggs and all those different types of things, honey. And, um, because I didn't, I didn't know anything else about those products that made me feel uncomfortable. So I was fine with it, but I decided at that point, I'm, I'm not going to eat meat anymore. And I remember my mum turning around to me and saying, oh, it's a phase, you know, you're not going to stick to it. Like, you know, give it a week and you'll be eating a burger from McDonald's. And I think it's probably, it was probably a sense of, of wanted to prove as well. When people tell you, you oh, can't yeah. <laughs> So, so a lot of the time, it makes you want to do even more as well. Yeah. You know I mean? So I think there's probably a sense of that as well with it. Yeah, definitely, you know, stubborn and kind of strong-willed teenager, um, you know, thinking, well, I'm going to prove you wrong. And I did. I stuck to it, obviously. And I, you know, I never really went back to it after that. I had a few mistakes along the way. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. And I think most, if you speak to anybody else that, you know, is pescatarian, vegetarian, vegan, whatever they are, they'll probably say that at some point they've they've had their mistakes, you know, where you accidentally, you eat something, you don't realise it, can, it contains mm. certain products or you actually get given something by somebody else and um, you believe that it didn't have any meat in it, but unfortunately it turns out that it does. And that's happened to me a few times in like restaurants and cafes and different things. And it is heartbreaking when that happens because you're, you're like, I've been so good, you know, I've yeah. like really tried to stick to this. And you do get kind of like emotionally attached to that idea, you know, and your emotion only builds up over time. You know, you start to, uh, you know, you humanize animals. That's the thing, you know, you put them on the same level. And um, so it is really, really difficult then when you make those mistakes. But, they, you know, they will happen. But. I've never kind of consciously gone back to eating meat in that time frame. Um, now, obviously, I'm 30 this year, so, um, but I've been vegan now, I think it's around five or six years. I don't know exact year to the date, mm. um, haven't been counting or anything, <laughs> but 
Yeah, so it's about six years, and I think the changing point for me, I'd always thought about it. I'd always thought, okay, so I know about this thing, I know about this veganism thing, and I know that people do it, and I know that it's different from what I do as a vegetarian. And I was, I was kind of inquisitive about that, and and wanted to know more about it. And I had a few friends um, that were vegan. And I remember thinking to myself, my only uh, reasoning and kind of like justification for my for myself of why I wouldn't go vegan was that, oh, it, you know, things won't taste very good and it'll be really bland and I won't have anything to eat and it'll be really restrictive. And I love my food. I do. I love my food. So I always use that justification for myself of I couldn't possibly do it because I love cheese I love cheese far too much I eat cheese all the time um you know I was I was even I was that person that was I like smelly cheese Stilton everything you know the the smellier the better um so I just I thought I can't I couldn't I can't do that and I I remember seeing these friends of mine that, that were vegan posting these these meals and like, you know, like people do these days, they take pictures of their food and they post them online, okay? That's a thing. <laughs> um, we all do it, we all get out. bits of that, okay? <laughs> um, I think yeah, you look at Instagram, it's just full of beer. <laughs> it is, exactly, it's just, so yeah. for you guys it's beer, not food so much. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so they were posting these pictures of their meals and I was it doesn't look that bad, you know, it doesn't look that restrictive it doesn't look you know it's not a plate of grass which is what I initially thought it would be like I'll be living off salad and you know not that I don't like salad I do but I just thought I'd be living off that kind of stuff you know I won't be able to have any crisps or sweets or anything that's good anything that I like any snack you know kind of like treats um but obviously that was just me being kind of completely detached from that and and being uneducated in it and not and not really looking to see what was out there so I decided to give it a go I thought you know what I'm not going to set myself up to fail um I'm just going to give it a go for a couple of days I'll give it a go for a weekend or I'll give it a couple of days and I'll see how it goes but if it doesn't work I'll just be vegetarian that's fine that's you know um, and I did. I tried it out for a few days, and those few days turned into a couple of weeks and months, and it's been that way ever since. So it, it, I found it easier, if if anything, and it gets easier every year. You know, as you know, with more products coming on the market all the time, more companies jumping on the bandwagon. Um, that's what I was going to move on to, actually. Like in terms of in terms of the transition period, yeah. did it help that veganism started to become, you know, more accessible and yeah, more popular yeah. as well? I guess. I think it's easier for people now. I mean, when I when I got yeah. into it, there wasn't actually that much on the market at that time. Um, the products in the supermarkets were very few and far between. You. Um, you couldn't go to as many restaurants as you can now. You couldn't order like a vegan Papa John's pizza or oh, no, no. takeaways take in restaurants didn't do that kind of stuff when I when I went vegan. And like I said, we're only talking like you know five six years ago, so that's not really that long ago. But there's been such a shift and such a change, and it's become so much more popular now. Um, and I think that is a good thing for people because it is an easier transition. You don't feel like you're giving up so much when you can still have a takeaway. You can still go out to eat with your mates, with your family, and not feel like you're being awkward because you yeah. have to sit there and go to say to the, you know, this the waiter or the waitress. You have you don't have to be like, oh, you know, I'm that awkward person. I'm, you know, can you explain to me what I can have or can you ask the chef to do this but take this off? You don't have to do that anymore because there's options clearly labelled on the menu and you yeah. just choose one. So it's, it've definitely made it a lot more accessible now, definitely, oh, I think. Yeah, hugely. Um, as you say, feeling awkward, can, be, oh, can you know, can you tell me if this is vegan, please? And then, yeah. then being tough and puff then perhaps as well. And, like, oh, and it okay, does this make you feel... Happen. Yeah, you, you feel like... I, I never enjoyed that side of it. I never enjoyed 
draw attention to myself mm. in that way, um, being that standout person in the group that's fussy with food, you know, because I've, I, like I said, I've always loved food. I've never had, I'm not a fussy eater, you know. Yes, there are restrictions to my diet and do's and don'ts to my diet, but I'm not a fussy eater, you know. So I, I'm, you know, there's nothing that I don't like as such. It's just there's things I choose not to eat because of what they are, you know. So it's kind of different. But yeah, it's it's horrible being that person in the group that's like, you know, oh, she's off again now. There is. She is again now moaning. Oh, we're all going to have to wait an extra half hour for our food because she takes ages to order. It's horrible. It there's, is. A, there's few worse feelings than having to say to the waiter, can you take this back, please? Mm. It's, it's an awful feat. I hate I doing it. I only, I only do it in like sort of extreme circumstances. Like yeah. if, if there's something like slathered all over my meal that I just can't eat or I don't like, because mm. I, can't, I can't eat a lot of dairy anyway. So if there's like <laughs> tons of it all over, I like, I can't eat that. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And I hate, I hate taking stuff back. It's, it's you yeah, know, it does. It's, yeah, it's not a nice... I mean, maybe some people enjoy that. You know, maybe some people want to be the person that kind of draws attention to themselves in that way. And it's like, oh, do you know what? Actually, no, I've got a dietary requirement and I've got this and I've got that. But I, a lot of people don't want to be that person. They mm. just want to turn up and have a nice meal with whoever they're hanging out with, you know? Um, so, yeah, it's different. Oh, with um with you i think because you made the decision really early on to be a vegetarian so you've been well a vegetarian say um, not included mm. when you were vegan you've been vegetarian for over half your life yeah, yeah. so i guess the move from being a vegetarian to being a vegan it probably wasn't as hard for you as it would be for a lot of people who you know have eaten meat just say say for me for example you know i've eaten meat all my life if i yeah. just suddenly one day decided to not eat meat again. It would be, it would be, would, would, well, I know it would be really hard for me. Yeah. Um, I, for the past couple of days, I haven't told um, any of the boys this, but for the past couple of days, I've actually been on a vegetarian diet. I, I thought, you know what? Okay. I'll do a vegetarian and see what it's like. Yeah, you know, I do like my meat though. I, I do like it. But funny story this morning. So I was working and my dad comes up and brings me up a bacon sandwich and puts it down. I was like, oh, cheers, dad. And I was working at the time, so I didn't really pay much attention. I was about to go into a conference call and I yeah. looked at it. I was like, I can't eat that. So I took it back downstairs and said to my dad, oh, I can't eat that. I'm doing a vegetarian diet. So I turned down a bacon sandwich for one of the, like the first time in my life today. Also yesterday. Oh, when I went what, to was the your, um, what was your father's reaction though, Rich? How, how did he react to that? Um, he was a more like, traditional man. Yeah, basically, <laughs> just like oh, put it in the kitchen. Then. <laughs> so all right, but when he I was probably uh, was more than happy to eat it for you, I'm assuming, yeah. Rich. Uh, yeah. It was the same yesterday. Um, I went, I went for food up to the shop yesterday because I bought a pot noodle, and I came back. I also bought, I also picked up a pepper army just out of habit. Yes. Days, and I came upstairs to eat, and I took it out of the bag, and I was about to un undo. I was like, oh, shit, I can't eat this. So I took it back downstairs. I said, Mom, do you want a pepper army? Because I can't eat it. And I love pepper army. I absolutely love mm -hmm. it. I've stuck to it. It's only a couple of days I've been doing it, but I have been pretty good. Like I had corn, corn chili con carne. Nice. Yeah. That was pretty nice. So the thing is, that's it. It's it's you're changing your mindset, right? Yeah. You're changing your habits, and that's not easy to do. Uh, anybody that tells you it is is. I don't know, maybe they didn't eat that much meat in the first place or maybe it wasn't a big part of their lifestyle. But, um, you know, it is, it's a change of mindset. It's a change of your lifestyle and it is, it can be quite difficult at first, you know, until you get into the habit of it and until you start to really have a look and see what's out there and do your research. Yeah. It can be quite difficult, but... Like I said, these days it's not that restrict. It's really not that restrictive these days, you know. Um, there is pretty much near enough a substitute for anything, and I'm not saying that all the substitutes are good, um, but they there are some pretty decent ones on you know on the market, and you know some people don't eat a lot of them. I mean, I I fluctuate, so I'll primarily like what they call plant-based so it's like more veggies and grains and 
um, kind of pulses and things like that because I enjoy that kind of food. It's not everybody's cup of tea. I get that, but it, I enjoy it. So, for instance, you know, I'll make a bolognese. I'll do it with lentils and mushrooms and onion instead of maybe getting your corn mince. I like those things, but I just don't eat them very often. Um, but now and again, as a treat, I'll get myself like a burger or, you know, like obviously meat free, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, a substitute burger or, um, you know, you're talking about bacon. I use, there's like a smoky corn ham vegan version and if you fry it up it goes really crispy like bacon put that in some you know in some bread with some tomato ketchup and you've got a bacon sandwich so I will eat things like that you know um as substitutes now and again I just don't eat them you know kind of religiously every day for every meal because I I am interested in my health as well as my life's you know my lifestyle choices you know and looking after my body and making sure that I've got the right food I need to be healthy and yeah. thrive. So I think that might be a common misconception as well, because some people immediately think if you're a vegetarian or if you're vegan, you, you're healthy. You know, if you just switch to being vegan or vegetarian, you're healthy. But there are plenty of oh. sort of vegan and vegetarian stuff out there that isn't good for you. You know, I mean, anything isn't good for you in large mm. assumption. But like, um, I think it is. It is a mindset that people seem to have this vision of uh especially vegan i'd say of being these you know healthy super skinny uh people that don't eat anything really no it's that yeah and that is a misconception it's that it's definitely not true because i mean you can you can get vegan ben and jerry's ice cream now right you can get a vegan kfc if you want to live off that kind of food you can be vegan but you won't be healthy yeah you know those foods as much as they are there for a meat, you know, a meat eater or a pescatarian for any diet, if you eat those kinds of foods, they're there to be eaten in moderation. You know, they're not there to be eaten yeah. every day. Um, so, and I, I've been through that. I have been through, oh, I can eat this because, you know, it's vegan, so it's healthy. I went through that phase, you know. But it didn't do me any favours in the sense of like, you know, putting on a couple of extra pounds, not feeling particularly energetic, you know, things like that. So you do have to find that balance where you have treats and you also think about, okay, well, I have to eat a certain amount of vegetable vegetables and, you know, everything else. So, yeah. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, you don't eat stuff just because it's vegan basically you know just for the sake yeah. of it well no definitely not i mean you know you i mean some people don't think about their health you know some people that's not on their radar that's not the focus of theirs um but let's face it guys we're not getting any younger oh. like i said i'm 30 this year <laughs> I do have to start thinking about those things. I do have to start thinking, okay, well, my metabolism isn't going to improve. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I want to be able to do, you know, I, I like hiking, I like swimming, I like doing all those things. So I want to be able to continue to do that for as long as I possibly can with as much energy as I can. So I have to fuel my body as much as I have to con- consider my moral compass on on what I eat as well, you know, so it comes into it for sure. So like one one of the one of the main running themes behind the podcast that I did was um in terms of KFC as we mentioned. Now yeah. for me for me I find it extremely odd that a yeah. vegan would set foot in KFC in the first place. Yeah on yeah. principle alone. So that's what really confuses me. It's like, mm. yes, they do a vegan burger, but at the same time, what vegan would actually step foot into a KFC? Mm. That's what confuses me. And that's that's a running theme throughout the, uh, the podcast yeah, itself. Yeah, no, I completely understand um, where you're coming from. I can, I can understand that it's quite conflicting because yeah. obviously yeah. On, on, a, on, a, on moral grounds, I don't... I don't back a company like KFC. I don't. I know oh. what their practices are. 
I've seen videos, kind of inside footage of factories that belong to or farms that uh, kind of provide meat for KFC and they have been pulled up time and time and again um, for having really dodgy practices basically on on uh, as far as kind of when you think about things like free range or uh, anything like that it's it's all governed by the rspca and there's certain guidelines they have to follow and and that's the same with meat production you know there's certain guidelines that are set um and and kfc have been one of those companies that have been pulled up in the past because there's you know they've had somebody infiltrate the company get this footage and it's not been great so it's not a company that i would back by any means but at the same time i think the best thing to come out of it would be if they put a product into their stores that happens to be vegetarian or vegan because i'm not you know i i'm not I'm not to say that I don't agree with vegetarianism either, okay? So I do 100%. If somebody is vegetarian, I think that's fantastic. If somebody's pescatarian, I think that's fantastic. You're doing your bit, you know? Yeah. Um, so I support it all. So if they put somebody something into their, their stores that is vegetarian or vegan, um, more people begin to buy it, you know, because it's a good product, it tastes good, and, um, you know, it becomes popular and... You know, maybe it's even an Instagram trend, but people start to buy it and then they start to put more products on their menu that are vegetarian and vegan. And then then what we see is there's a shift in the company, potentially, right? Um, that would be a good thing. That's a positive, you know, that if they have to, if they sell less meat, yeah, that's only a positive. And I also think that it's it's... It's almost like a like a gateway drug for people that haven't considered vegetarianism or veganism before. Yeah, That's so true. I love KFC. You know, I eat it all the time. I go in there. I see that there's this new product. I would have never ever thought about buying a vegan or vegetarian product, but it's in my favorite takeout restaurant that I love. So I'll give it a go. I try it. I actually think it's half decent. I really like it. And I happen to think that it's even healthier. So I think, hold on a minute, I can have the KFC that I love. I can still go to that place that I really enjoy going to, but I can do it and be slightly healthier and feel good about it because I know that I'm doing something that morally is you know makes me feel good potentially um why wouldn't you know why wouldn't you do that so i think it's almost like a gateway for people that haven't considered it before it's like an easy transition um of them cutting potentially cutting down the meat that they consume so i didn't i didn't think of it that way i didn't really think of it that way like you know it's a case it's a case of like richard said you know it's the thought of the thought of giving up well It'd be a case if you're still popping the KFC, but as you say, you know, it's a well, stepping stone. Have, it's you're saying to people that you can have that life, you can live, you can be part of that lifestyle, but you don't have to give up the things that you love. Yeah, I or didn't think food, of it that way. The food that you love, shall we say? So I think that's really, really important because that's often the justification that I used and other people use is that, well, I'd have to give this up, and I really like that, and I, I eat that all the time, and I don't know how I could, you know, give that up. But if someone can say, well, I can give you a prod, it doesn't taste exactly the same, but it's really similar because it's got the same, um, like, spice combination, it's got the same, like, breaded coating, it's crispy, it's in the bun that you used to, you know. Maybe they'll go for it because it's that easy transition project, you know, and maybe they won't eat that, you know, for the continuation of them being vegetarian or vegan, but it's that easy transition to start them off. And I think that that can only be a positive, you know. At the same time, though, I really do think that 
anyone who's been vegan quite some time, though, I I don't think it's catered. KFC is catered to them, so, so to speak. I think it is more a transition person's kind of food in that case. Yeah, I think it's really good for that. You know, I do think it's really good for that. Not to say that, you know, I don't judge anybody for their choices of where they eat, you know, or even what they eat. I think, you know, everyone's got their own decisions to make. And at the end of the day, it's 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 only yourself that has to justify that, you know. I don't I don't have to justify it to you. You have to justify to yourself why you feel that, you know, you want to eat that product, you want to buy those uh, that brand's um, products, and you know, or you want to eat that meat. So it's it's only you that you have to justify it to yourself. So veganism it's not just uh it's not just a, a diet though is it it's a no no it's yeah it, it is a lifestyle it's because uh, yeah. it includes um like not wearing animal products as well isn't it yeah so. yeah so it is a big it's a big lifestyle change and i think you have to start small um you can't expect yourself to be able to if you put that much pressure on yourself to say okay well you know, I'm going to clear out my wardrobe and get rid of all my leather shoes. I'm going to get rid of all my suede products. I'm going to check all of my cosmetics and make sure that they're cruelty free. And if they're not, I'm going to get rid of them. And that's a, that's a lot of pressure to put on yourself. Mm. But it is, overall, it is a lifestyle change. You know, it's a lifestyle choice. And you do have to think about things like, where you shop, what you buy, you know, I, I, for me, it's even transitioned into things like, um, you know, when I buy a product, I think about the packaging that it's in, you know, I try and avoid plastic, I try to um, buy products that are potentially made from recyclable, recycled materials, I, uh, I even all order my toilet paper in bulk, to cut down on packaging, Plastic, yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I order it in bulk from a company that only delivers, you know, that it's all wrapped in paper and cardboard. There's no plastic involved, and it comes in bulk so that there's less packaging again. And the actual paper itself is made out of kind of recycled bamboo, and so it's all this kind of. So it is. It's a huge, and it's not to say that you can't. What I'm not, I'm not saying that you can't be vegan and not order your toilet paper in bulk online. That's not what I'm saying. You do what suits your lifestyle. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, it, it's a slow process, and I still have a long way to go. I still do have a long way to go. There's, uh, you know, there's, there's other things that I think, okay, well, I need to change that. I need to, you know, I need to do that better. Um, but it is a process. But I think you have you know, starting out with what you eat, what you consume, um, that's that's important, you know. And because not only does that affect your health, not only does that obviously affect morally those animals' lives, it also affects our environment. So that's the, that's the other thing that you have to think about yeah. is the agriculture industry... Um, you know, it, 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 there's a huge effect on the environment there. And you, you may decide that eating meat, you know, that's that's what you want to do. That's what, But you might still be somebody that wants to help reduce climate change, you know. Um, and this is a way that you can do it. Not, right. not necessarily cutting out completely, but even eating less meat yeah. makes Some that difference yeah it does yeah. it makes a huge difference yeah. so i think if we could get most the majority of people to think of it like that um you know maybe they don't have that emotional attachment maybe maybe they don't have that uh that issue with the the moral justification of eating eating animals oh, but oh, Going back to one of your original points, I really do think a lot of people half the time don't really realise that eating meat and a lot of stuff. They really yeah. don't. I, I've seen yeah. it time and time again. Whereas, you know, when something comes to you on a plate, yeah. a lot of the time you don't really realise why you are eating. Yeah. And, you know, 
I think I think it's the fact that people have distanced themselves from it. They're not really so. I think that's that's a lot of it, really. Mm. So I think that's it's why... yeah, it's important to know to consciously understand the food that you eat and the way that that affects your body and the way that it affects the planet and all those different things, yeah. you know. And I, again, I'm not saying that being vegan is perfect because we've got you know there's there's issues with with other things like palm oil. There's issues with you know, a lot of vegan products, a lot of products in general contain palm oil. You know, there's issues with certain popular um, fruits and vegetables and things like that, you know, that, that that can cause issues as well. But overall, if we look at the picture overall, agriculture has one of the main, is one of the major mm. impact factors Um you know, because it's it's the methane that's produced, yeah. um, and it it's been proven time and time and again. There's you know there's there's plenty if you wanted to, if anybody wanted to, there's plenty of articles. There's plenty of you know if you don't if you don't want to sit down and read an article, there's plenty of videos out there. There's even probably podcasts that talk about it. Um, but it is scientifically proven and there's a lot of research there to, to show the effect on the environment that comes primarily from, from ag the agriculture industry. And it's not even that, you know, there's an effect de deforestation wise preparing land for yeah. agriculture. There's a huge effect on, on the land as well, you know, that they we need so much because the increase the demand is so high. People want so much of it. You know, they want they want to consume the dairy products or the meat products or the you know. So that we need this in we need more and more spaces to house these animals. Um, I, mean, I think I'm very much in the uh, like what you're discussing now with climate change yeah. and, and all that. Like I donate money to Greenpeace every month. Um, I've been doing that for the better part of god be a few years now yeah um like that's something that i'm very conscious of is yeah. the, like the one thing i thought was good about this entire lockdown thing was uh how it was just completely reduced traffic completely exactly so, and there was like blue skies over beijing for the first time in like a hundred years or something stupid yeah uh, so that speaks volumes that if people cut down on just you know using their car even mm -hmm like that that will help the environment but now the sort of it's easing everywhere you can see especially in china and in america mm. it's just gone straight back up again and especially when you've got um global leaders like donald trump who doesn't believe in climate change mm. it's it's an uphill battle to yeah. try, try and get this stuff done and you know um that's that i know that's but it, the thing of, is it it can seem like you I think for a lot of people it seem they feel like they can't make a difference how can I possibly make a difference as one singular person but you can make a difference you know um because if you think about you know if you do eat meat if you choose to eat meat and you choose to eat dairy products and you choose to consume um you know other animal products and byproducts and different things then if you look at your lifespan and the amount that you consume and the amount that you buy, if you were to cut that down, you know, even by half, that, that does make a huge impact. So as a singular person, of course, yes, you can make an impact, you know, and that, that rubs off on other people as well. I mean, I can't speak for everybody, but for myself, um, you know, I, I've had these conversations with friends and, and they and they've obviously then kind of thought twice about their actions and, and how they justify it. And my my parents, both my parents, my mum and my dad are now vegan as well. Um, mm. because we had conversations about it and it was it was mainly the the health benefits because my my father is he's got um quite a few medical conditions but he's got um quite a severe respiratory issue and it you know it's been proven that it affects certain you know it has certain health benefits and for him it was kind of like if what I eat can improve 
how I live day to day and how I feel health wise, mm. then there's no question about why I wouldn't do that, you know? So he, he made that change and, you know, of course my parents did it together. Um, and, you know, so it does rub off on people and that, that domino effect then, you know, and you look at the popularity of it over the last couple of years, um, you know, you have movements like, uh, however people say it, but the January, um, where every January there's a, there's a, there's a, a pledge that you can take online. You, you pledge to say that you're going to do it for the whole of January. You're going to be vegan. And they send you a, you know, they send you a pack, it's all free, and it gives you recipe ideas, it tells you information about why it's important to, you know, consider what you eat and what you consume and products that you buy. And, um, and they send you a little email every now and again to check in on you. And, there's, you know, their website's full of different recipes, and it's a, there's a community there, you can, people you can talk to. And I think it's, it's considering, it, it's considerably gone up and it's in popularity and and it that hopefully that will that momentum will continue and that's why one person can make a difference because it does rub off rub off on other people you know because if you're you know if you sit with your friends and you're having a meal and they're like oh that looks pretty decent what are you having smells nice looks nice yeah um and then they find out that it's, oh, I might have that next time, you know? And it, it does, it just naturally rubs off on other people. Yeah. And I, you know, I personally, you know, if I buy gifts for people, I make sure that what I buy when, you know, for other people, I, I it's ethical and it's, you know, if it's a food product, it's vegan. And people try things new, you know, people try new things and they think, oh, actually, I'll buy that again myself because I really enjoyed it. So... You can make a difference. I, I think that's really important, you know. Yeah, and it is. I can relate to that myself, though. I mean, um, Sean has net meat for actually you could tell us how long has it been? Two years, three years. Is it? Uh, yeah. When I've when I've gone out with him places, especially when I've got, when I've gone touring with one of the bands he was playing at the time. Mm. Um, a lot of the venues that were putting us up and things were providing us with like proper home cooked vegan meals. Mm. And uh, some incredible stuff, and um, yeah. went to a lot of places and things as well. And um, yeah, so um, I've probably tried some some really really fantastic stuff, fair play, and it's, yeah. which I probably wouldn't have otherwise ever tasted. It's the same with me, really. I've got family members that are either vegan or vegetarian, and if we go somewhere, and there has been times where I have literally been the only meat eater among them, so we'll end up going to somewhere which is uh, vegetarian or. I don't think we've ever gone to a purely vegan place, but at least vegetarian. Mm. And I don't mind, you know, I, as long as it tastes good, it tastes good. That's that's my attitude towards that's it. That's it. Some people are like my my grandfather, for example. He, he's very much. I remember looking for a place to go out for Sunday dinner before, mm. and because my auntie and my cousin are, are vegetarian, they were going to yeah. book a vegetarian place. But my grandpa was like, "No, man, I got to have my meat," you know. Um, mm. On Sunday, so you know, I guess that's a generational thing. I, I would imagine. Yeah, um, definitely. But yeah, that, that's the only instance of that. But um, it yeah, I find that, that it is a generational thing because they've obviously always, you know, grown up on that kind of lifestyle. Do you think it's the older that people are in terms of the older generation now that it's it's far more difficult for them to perhaps open their minds to something like that, or or yeah, is that I not? Think the thing no? is, you know, people people have always. Be, you know, people have always been vegan. People have always been vegetarian. You know, when they when they were growing up, there would there would it wasn't something that didn't exist. Yeah. Um, but it just wasn't as popular. It wasn't as mainstream. Um, you certainly wouldn't have been able to get, you know, products in the local supermarket aside from your veg, your fruit, your rice, your pasta. Um, so I think it is a generational thing in that sense that they find it quite difficult um, to connect with it. And I mean, I've had conversations with, um, you know, people within the older generation, shall we say. Yeah. Um, and and I, equally, I know quite, you know, in Swansea especially, there is a large community and we're all, we all reach out to each other and we're all very, you know, kind of, we've got Facebook groups and whatnot. And 
you know, there is quite a few members of the group, a large amount of the group, actually, that I would say are kind of, you know, 50s, 60s plus. Well, so it good. does, you know, yeah. people do connect with it, but I think it can be more difficult. And especially, you know, with, with Rich there mentioning his grandfather, I think in the valleys, <laughs> yeah. it's inherently yeah. kind of, yeah. No, I, you know, and, and it is, I think, you know, in certain parts of Wales, you know, in those little yeah. smaller valley towns or villages, it's not, uh, you know, it's kind of on unheard of and it's very traditional. You might have um, seen the documentary that was on as well recently, the, um, the yeah. Veganville documentary, that kind of properly emphasized that, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. And, and yeah, and the thing is, you know what? If somebody is happy, I, I don't, you know, it's a difficult one because I've gone down the route in the past of, you know, the activism side of things and I felt like I needed to pay my dues with that and that I needed to do some activism and I felt like there was this kind of, there was something going on in the world, but nobody could see it. And it was my uh, responsibility to stand up and, and, and put it in people's faces and shout about it. And I, I did, I felt that very, very strongly. And I, you know, I've gone to Cardiff, I've gone to, I've done it in Swansea. I've, I've been to different places, you know, in, in Wales primarily. And, I've stood, I've stood there with my placards, you know, and um, I, I look at it slightly differently now because I do believe that activism is important and I believe it's important to arm people with the facts and the mm -hmm. figures and the information so that they fully understand what... Because that's the problem is that it's not advertised on the packaging. no. You know, mm. we don't see those pictures, the videos. We don't we don't see the figures and the facts. Yeah. Um. So that people can make uh, a conscious decision to say, do you know what? Actually, I'm really comfortable with that, and I will. I I choose to buy it. I'm fine with it. I haven't got a problem with where it came from and how it was produced and the conditions in which the animals were kept. And you know, so I do, I, think, I do think that people generally don't don't realize all of that, though. Yeah. Um, and I mean, in terms of going in, it's quite like quite a hard approach, I, I feel, to that. And yeah, I think and that's the thing. The um, people aren't really familiar with it. No. I think perhaps the softer approach is perhaps is a bit, bit, bit better, a gentler approach you to could. it all. Be for a lot to, you could yeah, like it I, to, um, you know, you know how they got cigarette packets now with uh, pictures that you can't advertise on cigarette packets. It's just the pictures of what it does to your body, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and they're horrific. <laughs> they're awful. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's why a lot more people have taken up vaping because of that. <laughs> so, awesome. can, can, yeah. Yeah. So, can you like imagine if they'd done that with uh, with the meat products? Whereas you wouldn't see. So, say, you know, there's like a, a chicken in Tesco. Mm. You wouldn't have the cling film wrap. You wouldn't have that around it. And instead, uh -huh. you would have just wrapped in a picture of uh, yeah. slaughterhouse. You know, yeah. do you think people would buy it then? Well, that's the thing. You know, I think that's a question that people have to ask themselves. You know. Can you morally justify your consumption of meat? Um, and if you feel that you can't, if you really look into it, you do your research, um, or if you can, you know, if you if you're completely comfortable with those processes and 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 where it comes from, then you know that that's okay. I mean, I've got I've got a a colleague of mine in work, a friend of mine, that he's a farmer, you know, and we have conversations like this regularly because that's his lifestyle, you know, mm. that is, it's not his livelihood because he's a teacher, but it is his lifestyle and he has a little small holding and I've been there and he's got, you know, he's got some rams, he's got lamb sheep, he's got pigs, um, you know, and and chickens, and that is his lifestyle. And he can say 
Well, I don't buy into kind of mass consumption I because I produce what I need for my family. Mm. And I know that those animals, how exactly how those animals have been raised and the conditions they've been kept in because I do it myself. And I know that that is a luxury because yeah. I don't personally have the, the money to go and buy a plot of land, you know, and, and, and a little house in the countryside at the moment. But... So that is a luxury to be able to do that. But I think, you know, for somebody like him, when we have these conversations, he can say, well, actually, no, I am comfortable with it because I know I know each step of the process. Um, he's very familiar with it. But I think for anybody else, you do you do need to, to look into it at least and, and question... Um, how you feel about it and and if you make like I said if you make the decision that you're completely comfortable with it and you you know all the ins and outs you know the information and and it doesn't make you feel uncomfortable okay that's you know I, I do feel that it all, it all boils down a lot though to the fact that people just simply aren't really aware of what's yeah, yeah they really the information, yeah oh and it's yeah. it's the yeah. fact they've distanced themselves from it maybe as well I, I don't know but I think a lot of the time people simply aren't aware. I think if you, if you look 50 years down the line from now, I have a feeling the landscape would be very different in regards to how many people are vegan and vegetarian. Yeah, or even vegetarian. It'll be mainly because uh, mass consumption will, you know, <laughs> they're not going to be as many animals or there's not going to be as many, I guess, produce because uh, we're kind of farming everything at the minute. Yeah. So... Um, it will be different, I think, it, just just because of supply and demand. It's going to run out eventually. Something's yeah. going to run out, I, yeah. I think, anyway, especially if, like, laws come in place. But then you've got, you know, it depends on the country as well. So, like I said, China is, well, I think Asia as a whole is awful. for They it, eat li- literally everything. It's, it's, it's an insane, the stuff they eat in Asia. Um, like yeah. The dog. The dog the festival, dog, yeah. Yeah. And stuff. So I, I doubt that'll ever change, to be honest. That's because that, that's, that's the thing the is that for them, you know, they, they've grown up with that tradition. That's that that is a tradition that is embedded into their culture and into their society. And they feel they don't question it. They have no um they don't feel unsettled doing that but for us we feel unsettled because we see animals like dogs and cats as companions they're part of the family they're loved ones they're people that we we want to protect and we want to look after Mm. you know I'm you know I can relate to that I have a dog myself and he is he's my baby you know he is I call it I I refer to myself as (laughs) mum in regards to my dog you know so I can connect to that but the way that I see it is that's no different or it shouldn't be any different when we look at a cow, a sheep, a pig. They have just as much, They well, they, sh- they are entitled in my eyes to just as many um, rights as your dog, your cat, your parrot, your turtle, whatever your, you know, your pet is, they deserve to be treated um, with the same respect and the same you know, I'm not saying that you're going to decide to have, you know, people do have ple- plenty of people have pet pigs, but, you know, you might not want to do that necessarily. And that's fine. You know, you don't have to keep them as a pet, but you just have to see that there is a, there's a connection between them, you know. And um, like I said, it's only because it's tradition and it's something that's been embedded in the culture in in certain parts of Asia that they they don't even question that. They just think, well, an animal is an animal. I mean, why wouldn't we eat a dog? You know? So you have to... I mean, you know, the thing is, again, it's tradition for us. You know, we've... This is something that we have done for so many decades. It's embedded in our society. Exactly, um, yeah. Like you were saying about your grandparents. And so it's a difficult shift. I mean, you know, for example, 
when when you when you go somewhere else and and you mention Wales, I mean the first thing people think of is sheep normally. So yeah. it's, it's it's we've always had a strong kind of like farming yeah. culture. That's why the Welsh are, I suppose. It's huge, yeah. The, mm. But farmers won't be out of a job. <laughs> you know, we still need crops. Yeah, that's the thing, and um, it's if if the if a large percent of the population decided to move onto a slightly more plant based diet, we would need more crops. I.e., you turn that agriculture farmland into, you know, land to grow crops. Um, I think the farmers would would adapt. If they needed to, if the yeah, I think I think so, you know. Yeah. And that's the way. That, that, if that's the way things went, though, that they'd have to adapt to, to yeah. simply survive. I that's don't want them to be. Yeah. I don't want them to be in a position where they lose their livelihood. I don't, you know, oh. or they lose their land. That's not. That's not what anybody wants, you know. But it's just make it's making people think of it in a different way. Yeah. Um, you know, is there something else that you can move into? You know, exactly. you Revenue. can still be a farmer. Yeah. Yeah. All about adapting. Well, that's it. I mean, just to give you some figures and facts. <laughs> but there's at the moment um, the the majority of crops that we produce um, is actually produced to feed animal agriculture. So right. instead of us using them to potentially, um, you know, combat the issue of the fact that, you know, there's a large percent of the world's population that, that live in a state of, um, you know, of kind of eating very little food to no food. So instead of us using those crops that we grow to feed the large percent of animals animals that we we have so that we can consume meat um you know we could use that land we could go we could grow crops and we could you know we could help help the planet and and also help that large percent of the the world's population that that are desperate in desperate need for for food, just just simple food, Sim, you know. Yeah. Um, so I think that's the thing is, you, I don't know, once you start to look into it and once you start to really consider it, um, it's like a thread and it goes on and on and it, you know, it starts to unravel that, that kind of, um, but... I think it's important, you know, I think it's important to be able to at least consider it and to 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 have and to educate yourself. You know, that that's the main thing, isn't it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree with all that. Um, one thing I did wonder mm. is um your or oh, your fiance now, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Congratulations on that. Um is he vegan as well? He is vegetarian. Ah. Okay. So he's not vegan. Um, when we met, he ate meat. And it wasn't me pushing him around, <laughs> telling him what to do before anybody says that. No, he, when we met, he ate meat. And he decided, he made the decision. He said, well, you know, when, when we go out for dinner or I cook for you, um, I won't eat meat just out yeah. of kind of respect for for your beliefs and, and yeah. for how you you live your life and I obviously very you know I was very grateful for that and I respected him for that and I did actually say to him at the time well don't feel like you need to do that just for me you know because I, I don't believe in pushing my views on other people I believe in educating people and I believe in giving people um, information and facts but I don't believe in pushing my views on people yeah. so um, you know, I did say to him, don't feel like you need to do that just for me. I'm not expecting you to change who you are. Um, but he was more than happy to do that. And that was something that he wanted to do. 
And because naturally you spend more and more time together, um, he found himself eating less and less meat because we were together and often eating together as you do when you hang out with friends or partners and you tend to go for food or, or cook together or whatever you do, get a takeaway together. So he, te- he, he was eating less and less meat anyway. Um, and he, he kind of just decided, well, do you know what? I'm not eating it. Ha- you know, I'm hardly ever eating it now. And I'm quite happy as I am. Um, I'm still enjoying the food that I eat. So he decided to, to, to commit to that then and, and, and be vegetarian. And he still, you know, he still eats. Um, we don't buy it for the house because we do live together and, we, you know, we don't buy it to to have here but he when he goes out he'll get milk in his coffee or you know he might if yeah. we go out for a when when we weren't in lockdown if we went out for a cooked breakfast he would have eggs um yeah. but he does you know we yeah. don't necessarily have them at home we you know he because it's just easy to have the same food yeah you know? I, like i ask because like my um my brother-in-law is a vegetarian has been all his life since he was born mm. And, um, like, my sister, what she is, well, she isn't really a vegetarian, but, like, she was saying that, you know, when they started living together, she just yeah. kind of more or less became a vegetarian through proxy. And she, like, because they never had bacon in the house, they never had meat. Yeah. They always had, like, vegetarian meals. So she was just like, I'm, I'm a vegetarian by accident, essentially. Um, oh, but yeah. it, was, it was more more so because it was easier. Because, like, you buy in, you're shopping, and you're like, well, if I only I'm going to be having these burgers as part of buying six packs of, bur- you know, a six pack of burgers, if it's just yeah. me. So, yeah. you know, and things like that, like when she comes over, um, if um, and it's not it's not like Dave really cares, to be honest, because like if we go out for food, she yeah. might have a Sunday dinner. So she'll have a beef dinner or something. And he doesn't he doesn't he's not bothered, Dave. Yeah. But um, when she comes over, our she my mother will make food and she'll eat it. She's not bothered by it. But it, I always wondered whether it was, you know, a thing because i would imagine it's a thing with a lot of people with yeah. you know people uh, partners who are vegan so yeah. their house is pretty specific but then do they stick to it like yours has stuck to it he to has yeah. the vegetarian which is which is good but um yeah it was just an interesting thing really yeah and it is i mean you know in some ways would it be easier you know i i have i've never dated anybody that's been you know vegan um would it be easier if you know you had you were able to connect on that level and you were able to say that we you know we both have the same belief system and sometimes yes it would be but really i mean as long as somebody is willing to accept that that's how you choose to live your life and that's you know then that's that's all you need really is is that understanding mm-hmm. as long as somebody isn't out to try and prove you wrong or um you know questioning your beliefs regularly or um you know then then it then it's it's easy really you know you don't you don't have to i think a lot of people i know um i mean the majority of my friends funnily enough are either kind of vegetarian or, or pescatarian or vegan and um you know i don't think any of them date somebody that lives the same way that they do you know they they mm-hmm. So, you know, it's that it does work. It's just that you have to have that understanding. Yeah. Um, and you have to respect each other, you know. You have yeah. to be co- exactly. considerate and respect each other. So, um, like I said, I don't I, I don't try and make him feel bad for any of the choices he makes either. So if he does choose to eat fried eggs on his cooked breakfast, then I don't sit there and kind of go, right. Do you know where, the, where those eggs came from? Do you know what? I don't, because it, that's his personal choice. And some, you know, I could be, you know, this could be baptism of fire now, but, you know, I'm sure there's many vegans out there that will probably say, well, actually, no, you should. You should sit there and have that conversation with him. But I I think that it's something that you have to come, you need to come to that realisation yourself. Mm. And, yes, it's important that you, I, you know, I talk about it and I share those views with people and I share the information with people but I think you need to come to that decision yourself for your own um kind of moral morality and and deciding that okay that's something that I don't that doesn't sit 
well with me and I don't feel comfortable with that. So I'm going to make this change yeah. for myself because that's how you see it. That's how you see it through to the long run. It's, it's like, um, for, like I always find people that force or try to force something on another yeah. person. It has the complete opposite effect. Exactly. Like you see, you see it with um, uh, like religious groups, like born again Christians and Jehovah's Witness people like that. And not not that I'm hating on them at all, but yeah, I find they have been like I've seen seen it in in you know, real life in Cardiff and stuff where they try, they're basically arguing with someone, mm-hmm. um, and it's like you know they're not getting it. There's no point. Yeah into it you know tell them to open your mind to it but don't try and ram it down their throat there's is there's, there's a difference you know there, there is a... the rest of the thought again really. yeah i don't think it's myself yeah i think that's the thing you know i i personally know that when i was considering it if somebody had sat me down and said do you know how much of a bad person you are because you do this and you do that and you consume eggs and you eat all that cheese i probably would have gone the other way and decided yeah. never to go vegan. But I came to the decision on my own. And like I said, I had friends that um, I could, you know, have those conversations with. And they weren't pushy with me. And they didn't make me feel bad for my choices. And I I think for most people, that's that would be the best way, you know. I think it's more, more, about, more about, like, as you say, educating. Yeah. You know. Even saying, even saying, why not try some, you know? Well, that's here's, it. Here's give, some, just give it some food, why not try some? See how you feel. Day. Don't put pressure on yourself. I certainly didn't. You know, like I said, I didn't, I didn't decide to do it completely overnight. I said to myself, okay, well, I'm going to give it a go for a weekend. See how I yeah. feel. If I absolutely hate it and I feel like I can't handle it, I'll just be vegetarian. And, and vice versa, if you were, you know, if you were doing what Richard's doing now and just starting to eat, you know, less meat, then just give it a go. Just give it a try. See how you feel about it. Don't be too hard on yourself. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. But it, it is important to understand and, you know, look into a little bit of the background. Find out some facts and figures obviously try not to kind of read too much on necessarily facebook or instagram but um there's plenty of um you know even some really interesting documentaries that you can watch on you know uh netflix is probably about three or four and i mean some of them are quite graphic so they're not everyone's cup of tea but i think it is important to to like I said, see the practices and be able to say, well, how do you, how do your, how do you sit with that? How do you feel about that? Do you feel comfortable with it? If you do, great. Um, carry on as you are if you want to. But if you don't feel comfortable, why is that? Why don't you feel comfortable? Why don't you want to watch it? Why don't you want to know where it comes from? Exactly. Is that because you know that really, it's it's not as natural as you think it's you know people often use the um the justification of well it's the food chain you know it's the cycle of life and it's the food chain well yeah you know other animals eating animals some other you know depending, we're not talking about herbivores obviously here but that is part of the food chain it is part of the natural ecosystem but Human, the way that we do it now, you know, humans, um, mass, the mass production, um, you know, mass farming, feeding, you know, the way that we raise the animals, that's not part of the ecosystem. That's not part of the, you know, the, the, the food chain. That's unnatural, if anything. So... Um, you know, we're not we're not talking about um, living off the land and hunting. We're not talking about that. We're talking about walking into a shop and buying a product that doesn't even look like what it's where it's come from. Oh. You know, so yeah. I really do think it boils down to that, though. Like most of the of the time, I honestly think it, it really does all stem back to that. It's the fact that when it's presented like it is. 
people are, are, don't have any association with where it's come from, what it is. Yeah. And I honestly think that if you, you know, if you speak to the general public, that seems to be, you know, the mass kind of understanding that they, they don't really realise what they are eating. Yeah. I've seen this to myself talking to people various times. Yeah, that's it. And I think it's important that we should know. We should know um, what we're consuming. We should know how it affects our bodies. We should know how it affects the planet. Yeah. Um, it, that's really important. You know, it is, it is really, really important. And I think, you know, especially for me, I think, you know, you have, you need to be educated. You need to be reading up on these things. And I'm not just this, you know, many other things. I mean, there's a lot going on in the world right now where we're talking about educating ourselves and I'm not going to go into other subjects because obviously that's not what the podcast is about, but it is really, really important to, to not just kind of keep skirting on through and not even consider. And especially, you know, if you are a family and, you know, those products are something that you prepare for your family, you know, how does that affect your body? How does that affect your child's body potentially? Um, is it healthy? Is it something? And I know that obviously people say, well, okay, well, meat is a source of protein. Yes, I'm not arguing that it's a source of protein, but there are other sources of protein, you know, and the only reason that meat actually contains a percentage of protein is because animals eat plants. Well, that's so a good point. The protein doesn't it's actually basic. come from the meat naturally. It comes from the consumption of plants, of grain, that those animals eat throughout their life uh, cycle. And then when you consume it, it contains protein. So you can get plenty of protein from being vegetarian, vegan, pescatarian. It's not an issue. You know, I do, you know, I go to the doctors and I get um, my bloods taken every now and again. And I make sure that my levels, you know, my iron levels my everything is 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 as it should be um and i've never had an issue I've ne you know it's never been oh well you're low in this so you know maybe it's your diet it, it doesn't come up you know yeah. and personally whether it's a placebo or not i'm not sure but personally i feel that i've never you know i i've never felt better you know i've never felt healthier or or had more energy um and i think that is it's lots of different things you know it, but what you put into your body what food you decide to consume it is a huge part of it what would your final message be final message be um well like i said be, be cautious be aware of what you put in your body yeah be open to the idea of trying something different and don't put too much pressure on yourself. That Start off small. Do something that seems manageable and educate yourself and, and just ask yourself if you can morally justify yeah. what you consume. Um, when, once you are armed with the facts and figures, can you morally justify it to yourself? And if you can, then great. Again, I'd love to have a conversation with, with people like that and, and, and know their views, their viewpoints and their, and I think that's a really interesting idea as well is that you, again, I have to be open to how other people live. And I'm more than happy to have those conversations. Um, but the main thing is making sure that you're healthy, you're happy, and that you're, you know, you, you don't put too much pressure on yourself and you just do it a little bit at a time. Thanks, Becca. Cheers for that. Very much appreciated. Very good. So what I did want to talk, I wanted to, um, I wanted to ease things, well, not ease. I wanted to... 
slide back into the animal cruelty um, side of things we've talked about. Perhaps talking about the anti whistleblower, the ag gag bills. Um, I know Tom brought this up in preparation for the cast as well. Did you uh, look into that much at all, Tom? Um, I read about it like uh, a year or two ago. Uh, pretty much, is uh, any like uh, outside source trying to infiltrate um, uh, mass mass process in uh, farm? It's uh, it's made it a criminal offence for them they to do. Basically, uh, they hide factory farming abuse from the public eye, more or less. And uh, I can tell you a little bit more. I did do a little bit of research. Um, what do these bills do? And what are they? Uh, they can take various forms, such as the banning of photos, videos um, of or inside a factory farm without permission from the owner, making it a crime for an undercover investigator to get work at a factory farm, um, requiring that any violations may be immediately reported. Now, which that may sound good, but basically that's an ulterior motive intended to prevent whistleblowers from establishing a pattern of abuse with inside the factory farm company Soviet um, prosecutors, though, will rarely file charges um, for animal farm cruelty um, unless a pattern has been established and the evidence is extremely overwhelming. Um, so that's that, basically. It's quite wrong, and, isn't um, it? It's, it's, time yes, and time again, such, these, such these um, investigations, though, and these whistleblowers have, have documented, um, you know, animal cruelty, animal abuse, etc., within factory farms, slaughterhouses. Um, so there's basically a bill in place to kind of protect themselves, cover themselves up, etc. Is that an American law? Is it over here uh, as well? It's an American law, but I'm pretty sure okay. I saw hints of it possibly come into the UK. But uh, as far as that's gone, I'm not not too brushed up on that at the moment. And um, that that information I, I obtained from the Humane Society, which is um, the American Humane Society. Um, now. Let's have a look. Um, I've ex I I found some information out the uh, the Humane Society of the United States. Um, let's have a look. What 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 have they achieved altogether? They exposed a Vermont slaughterhouse um, plant that led to the closure of such. Um, an investigation of a of a cow slaughter plant in California prompted the largest meat recall in U.S. history and criminal convictions. Uh, many of these cows were too sick to even stand up. Uh, uh, undercover, undercover footage showed the sick cows being dragged by chains or pushed by forklifts to be slaughtered. Um, an investigation into a Wyoming premium food farms documented workers punching, kicking by the pigs and piglets, and um, resulted in cruelty charges against nine workers. So that's some some of the things that have have come from these whistleblowers and such, right there. And that's from the Humane Society. Terrible. So they they. The people that have blown this uh, probably wouldn't be prosecuted, would they, would they or under these uh, agag laws? Well, I don't know. That's the thing. This this bill is in place to kind of kind of out these people, I suppose, to to stop them coming in within the first place. So I'm not sure. But again, this is all America as well, though. So. I'm not really sure. Yeah, I, I, a lot of our meat is is going to come from America. No, that we yeah, are yeah. out, uh, out of the EU, like. There was a 1906 publication, actually, uh, called The Jungle, uh, which looked at the Chicago meat industry and its practices. And um, that was a key player in uh, in the passing of the Pure Food and Drug Act and the Meat Inspection Act, which was in place ever since. But um, I'm not really sure when this ag gag bill, I'm not really sure when that came in, actually. Um, I'll be honest with you. I, I'm guessing it is... It's, Fairly recent, really. I know it was at least thirteen years. Well, this this would be in thinking about. Oh, this would be, you know, when you started having like hidden cameras and and mobile phone footage and stuff like that. So it in the in the grand scheme of things, it probably be fairly recent. I imagine. I yeah. wonder what classifies as an undercover reporter these days. I mean, are we fucking? Do we fall into that category? Because we talk about it on a public forum, or by the sounds of it, the undercover the undercover report. Are worse off in all this. The companies seem the companies seem to be protected as such in terms yeah. of this. And yeah, I mean, they seems like they'd be worse off. But say, like, oh, don't look at the illegal stuff I'm doing. You know, it's Julian Assange, like. Yeah. yeah. It's well, like, according, uh... according to, again, going back to the Humane Society, the ag the ag gag. Am I pronouncing it right? The ag gag laws. 
or the AG gag, the AG gag laws. Um, <laughs> they're aimed at intimidating and punishing whistleblowers, um, investigators, and journalists who are exposed in these situations. So that's the kind of ulterior motive within, I suppose. It's uh, whistleblowers it's just get a uh, bad time all over the world, but constantly, like you know, you secretly exposing people, it's gonna fucking piss people off, you know, especially big, big companies that you know, in you a perfect fucking with world, their money. It's... Yeah, in a perfect world, then the whistleblowers would be rewarded, but exactly, yeah, it's been locked away now. <laughs> it's just quite yeah. the opposite it's in terms of the the um, the slaughter side of things and and the the factory farm side of things is quite the opposite. I mean, I, I've watched a lot of these videos as well in, in the run-up to this. I'm sure many of us have as well. And, uh, you know, it's out there. It's out there. Like, it exists. I see one. And in that film, Earth Things, there was one. one. I mean, I see so much slaughterhouse footage. I see so much nasty shit. It doesn't matter if it's happening to animals. It's like gangland videos and accident. You know, just the internet. You know, we grew up with the internet. I've seen some fucked up shit. You know what I mean? It's just... Yeah. What, oh, back now by in this in this uh fucking um earthlings video is is a bit about fur and you know like uh electrocute this fucking like wolf or something it ain't a wolf but it's some wolf it's looking fucking, uh, yeah. fucking thing yeah. like so it's like out conscious then they cut his fucking skin off but he's still alive like and they completely uh, pull yeah. fucking skin up over his head and like he's pulling it's like pulling a jumper off it's like pulling this up like this over his fucking head and then they just pull yeah. his skin right up over his face just rip the whole fucking fur off why is it still alive and it's, it's just there it's alive man it's like crawling around with no skin on it's like fucking martyrs like and his eyes are going like ah man it fucked me right up this morning like did not <laughs> did not need that at nine o'clock this morning but, yeah that was, that was heavily they, disturbing film I saw that, that they was overfeed, they overfeed like foxes and stuff as well don't they like, like to the point where yeah. they can't move just so they grow more fur like you know they got more oh, fur to harvest surface area like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That that that's really disturbing definitely it was horrendous that the was the worst bit real life so I don't know I, I, yeah just on the type of subject of animal torture essentially um but you've got the whole vivisection and medical side of it as well. I don't know if you've got that on your, your list there, but like, you know, testing on animals uh, and yeah. stuff like that. You know, like, you know, there's this bump it where they like cracking monkeys' fucking skulls open and it's like giant nutcracker. I like just to test. It's like, uh, it's basically high, high collision car accidents. They got their head inside this like vice thing that crunches forward really quick like that but also turns sideways it just goes like poof, like this and it cracks a fucking like skull and it flattens it a bit you know and then they like stitch them up and try and like you know make them recover and stuff it's just well, why are they doing that you can't, you can't fucked, a bit. Why, why do they do that uh, it was to, it was i think it was saying in that case to, to simulate um car accidents like oh, high speed I mean, car I... accidents like, yeah, so when you've, like, literally your head is hit the fucking steely wheel and it's like your, your skull has turned into a jigsaw, like, inside your head, you know, and they're, like, trying to put you back together or whatever. So, I'm not, you know? I'm not advocating that, but how else could they do it? I don't know, man, this is it, isn't it? This is the thing, like, you know, uh, with a lot of stuff, it's like, it goes through animal testing and then it goes through human testing anyway. But, like, with that, you're not going to put someone's head in a vice you. It's, it's, yeah. it's, um... It's a difficult one, like, and I'm not, I'm not saying it's right, but I can see why they do it. Um, I see the argument well, with the uh, medical test and the things. Uh, oh, why do they use it on animals? Why don't they just like, why don't they do it on people on death row and things? And it violates basic human rights. Yeah. A lot of people would argue what about animal rights? Then at the same time, see, that's the thing. Well, yeah, this this is it. This is exactly it. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's a it's a messy one that is, because it's for the greater good, isn't it? You know, but like greater good at, at what cost? It's like we're not. Honestly, Mandus kills millions to save billions on Watchmen. Like, you know what I mean? You seen you seen the end of Watchmen? Spoiler yeah, alert. Yeah. It's like. <laughs> 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 uh, it's like what is the cost? You know, to the. To the, the the breakthrough or whatever, um, is it worth it? You know, how do you, how do you quantify cost? The cost of lives, like it's just well, the human or animal. Seems to do it pretty well. 
Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That's like I got slightly off topic there, but I expect. Uh, I just think before uh, we can like finally be you know be peaceful with animals and not do this, we've got to like sort out uh, people first. That's kind of where where I'm landing on it. Like, yeah, I mean, people are there. There's always going to be people being cruel. It's I. <sighs> I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know. Like, it's, I don't know. It's, that's too big a question for me to. It, it is. Yeah. It's a wide one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Still racism and shit. Like, you know. And, uh, yeah. Isn't it? Clean up your own house first. People like, like, you know, people are gonna, they're not going to give a shit about animals, and you know, if they don't give a shit about each other. Exactly. Yeah, I, yeah. I give all the shit I do about animals, and I do, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like. You know, it's like total, like edgy, like nineteen-year-old MySpace girl, and they're like, "I love animals more than people," but <laughs> I, 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 I genuinely do. You know, it's like a, I am legend, yeah. and that dog dies. So, oh. Oh, uh, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was a. I was watching the Soprano. I got this Sopranos podcast, which is going now, and there was a question. They haven't asked me anything. Quite a question at the end of every episode, and uh, he, someone like asks a question to one of the guys, like one of the cast what kill do you get the most shit for? Because, like, through the series, a lot of people die, obviously, and, like, um, there's quite a lot of emotional kills. And um, they're, like, the one that he gets more shit for is when he accidentally kills a dog. And he's like, I <laughs> can't go anywhere without getting shit for accidentally killing this dog. Like, he, he smacked up on heroin and suffocates this dog by lying on it. And, like, he's like, to this day, like, I played a mobster for, like, fucking 12 years or whatever the fuck it was, 10 years. Like, I killed fucking so many people in all these horrible ways. No one gives a shit. Like, I fall asleep <laughs> on top of a dog in a TV show <laughs> and everyone just loses their minds. Like, um, <laughs> but it is like that, though. People go crazy, don't they? About, like, animal cruelty and stuff. But, um, so we've got a, sec- we've got a second guest on this episode it's quite a lengthy episode we've got quite a lot of information um so it, it, it's quite interesting because it's a completely different um perspective on things than the previous guest um so it's it's really interesting in that regard but this is um someone i, I was in a band with for a few years and um again they introduced me to like not militant veganism but like you know it gives you a real perspective into it so like i even though it's not my i'm not organizing this podcast like it's gareth's cast I uh, had to go and have a sit down um, with uh, old uh, old Harry Harry Bryan um, for, of uh, Catastrophic Blood and him and really good for much of Eurodom's fame um, <laughs> and uh, see what he had to say on veganism. So we're going to segue into that now and uh, see what the business has to say on things. Cheers now. So I just wanted to ask you um, why you became vegan. I know we've probably spoke about this in the past, but um for the purposes of uh of this uh, little podcast um can you just kind of maybe explain a little bit about yourself and why it is you became vegan in the first place yeah i mean um <laughs> first of all just obviously thanks for you know um reaching out and saying you know you wanted to ask us some questions or whatever um um i mean you know, like I like I said, I I went vegan quite some time ago. Um, it was at the the end of 2013, um, and by that point, I had already been vegetarian for you know um, about sort of nine ten months. I I th- I think I mean I you know there wasn't a day where I said okay today's the day I'm a vegetarian now. It it wasn't that straightforward. Um, I was actually traveling with um another guy uh james stringer um you know he's uh i mean he you know he, he was in a project called uh meatpacker and um you know guys complete bellend but um by the way no <laughs> shout out to uh james now he's a cool guy he um he, he got me thinking about it because you know we were on tour together for um i think it was something like two or three weeks um, at least a fortnight anyway. And, um, he was the only vegan guy in a group of people who were all, um, consuming animal products at that time. None of us were vegetarian or anything. And, um, I just felt, you know, I, I you know, it, to be honest, it was, it was out of thinking, I don't want this to be the only guy who's saying to people like, Oh, I don't eat like, let's say you sit down and there's food prepared. I didn't want to think, 
this is the only guy being like, oh, actually, I don't want this. So I thought, you know what, like, it's just a couple of weeks. I'll just go um, without meat as well and just, you know, just see what it's like. And actually, I think on the tour, another guy just um, sort of maybe about, I don't know, halfway through or towards the end was was doing the same as well um, or, or, or similar anyway. At least he was um, cutting down on um, what he was eating. And um, it was a feeling that, you know, I just did it. Like I said, I wasn't intending to turn vegetarian at the time, but it was just, um, you know, like he was a friend and I thought, oh, yeah, you know, why not? And of course, coming back from that tour, um, you know, it, <laughs> it seemed ridiculous to start again because you think, you know, after a couple of weeks, look, I wasn't eating meat. <laughs> there was no <laughs> issues, you know, surprise. There was no, uh, you know, I wasn't um, keeling over. I hadn't, uh, you know, the, the weight wasn't <laughs> f falling away from me. Um, so after that, I pretty much decided, you know what, um, I just don't need it anymore. And I, it wasn't a really thought through thing. Um, but I did have a history of... Um, like I'm from a farming background and um, I remember the way in which um, the animals were treated here. And, you know, it's as close to, at the end of the day, you've seen um, where I live uh, multiple times. It's not like I come from a, um, you know, a place where there is like a intensive style of farming. It's not like factory farming or anything like that. Cause I think often the, um, the, the argument gets shifted to not whether or not it's right to kill animals, but whether or not factory farming is right and wrong. And, you know, you have people that say, oh, you know, factory, factory farming is awful, blah, 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 you know, so abusive and all the rest of it. And people will say, oh, yeah, 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 no, 100%, definitely. Oh, but, you know, um, living on, an, you know, an organic farm, that's great. And everyone will be, oh, yeah, no, yeah, no, grass-fed, oh, that's great. And, of course, you know, I'm from, like I said, I'm very familiar with... Um, having a, a kind of a, sm a smaller uh, operation where you have, um, you know, just, just a few animals, like we kept pigs. And the bottom line is, you know, however nicely you treat them through the course of their life, um, if you end up having them sent away, um, ultimately to have, you know, their heads cut off, their organs removed, be split in half, um, it's really not important. You know, it's not, it's not, not it's not relevant as in it is worse if you treat them badly before you kill them but even if you treat them well the fact is it still ends much the same way and um so when i hear people talking about oh you know but oh you know i only buy this it's organic it's whatever you know at the end of the day it's um still a complete nonsense you know um and when i was uh you know younger um even though we're conditioned to think that these things are fine when you actually see it um it's very difficult to to deny the kind of the savagery of it um you know it's still bloody they suffer and um yeah so i i even though i didn't go um vegetarian straight away um i certainly didn't want to have any part in that anymore you know um and that was that was you know i mean years ago now but it was following on from that that of course i met uh this guy james and he was telling me because i you know i didn't really know anything about veganism um before meeting this guy and um once i did um spend that time with him um and realized that actually this is a very um simple thing to do it's very easy there's no, you know, nothing traumatic about it. Um, you know, that kind of set me on a path of kind of learning more about it. And like I said, within a few months, um, I decided to watch the film Earthlings. I know there's another film out, um, Dominion now, but um, essentially anyone who who is, um, I mean, not just interested in veganism, but anyone, I, I mean, basically think anyone should, should watch these films. Um, you know, I can't, I mean, I can't speak to Dominion, but certainly Earthlings, um, you know, it's, um, it's, it's something everyone should see because, you know, whatever you decide to do after watching it, 
um, it shows you the way in which we interact with animals. And I think there's a lot of um, stuff that we believe about our food, which isn't isn't factual, it's marketing. At the end of the day, um, companies want to sell you uh, what they see as a product, which is, of course, actually... Um, you know, other creatures, other things which live just in the same way that, um, that we live, you know, but there's a, there's a, um, a narrative handed to us because they want us to buy things from them. And at the end of the day, we all know you, you can't trust advertising, you know, advertising is about making money. It's not about ethics. Um, so yeah, I'd encourage anyone to watch the film Earthlings. Um, I mean, there are a whole bunch of films out there, you know, like obviously there's like, uh, Cowspiracy was a big one. Um, like I said, Dominion. Um, to be there, there's a bunch of them. There's also ones m more about health as well. Um, things like Forks Over Knives. Um, I think Vegucated is one as well. But um, yeah, anyway, I, I ended up watching um, some of these films. And yeah, after watching Earthlings, just decided, you know what, like um, there's, there's, there's no... There's no way I can um, continue to consume animal products um, in good conscience. So my next question would be, did you find it difficult becoming a vegan? Was it difficult making the change initially? Um, I guess it's a lot easier now to be a vegan than it was like five, ten years ago. You know, when people ask things like, is it easy? Of course, you know, um, depending on how long um, someone's been vegan, I suppose it will vary. I guess a lot of people, when they first get into it, find it tricky. But for me, um, it's been, I mean, over, it's been at least six years now and um, fully vegan. And before that, I was vegetarian for a, about a year um give or take so it's been like seven years um since i've eaten any you know animal products um or at least um six years fully vegan um it's funny you know should say i'm i was the first person um you really knew went vegan maybe i mean if your sister's vegan <laughs> i don't know what that says um but uh Maybe, I, I guess, maybe she went vegan more recently, I suppose. I don't know. I guess it was a few years ago back when, um, you know, we were touring together now. Um, yeah, as to whether or not, like I said, it's easy. I, I mean, I think it is, um, obviously, because, you know, it's like with anything. You know, you don't, it's rare that you, <laughs> you, you, you find people that literally eat anything you know, even if it's just as simple as like, oh, I don't like this or I don't like, you know, and it literally just comes down to like you looking at something and going, OK, you know, <laughs> does it have animal products in or not? Everything's labeled now pretty much. I mean, like 99 percent of stuff you're going to buy. So if you're not familiar with it, you look at it and there's these jokes going around all the time about, you know, vegans constantly checking um, label sort of labeling and stuff. I mean, that is true <laughs> to uh, to a point when you're not familiar with something but given that it's a, a lifestyle you know after a very i'd say a short period of time you you become familiar with things you know i mean like for example i don't know um say there's like a brand of i don't know like crackers or cereal or whatever you know you've only got to look at it once once you know okay yeah this is good this is not good I mean, I suppose unless you're, you're <laughs> some serious <laughs> issues with memory recall, you're not forever um, checking stuff. Um, it might seem like that at first, but it's just something you get used to. Same as if you have an allergy or maybe there's some religious reason you don't eat um, certain things. It, it's really not that different um, f from anything like that. So I wouldn't say um, it's particularly difficult. Um, at all and to be honest especially now like you know 2020 if people say they can't be vegan it, I, I mean I, I don't really understand the assertion um, honestly it's it's um, it's confusing uh, to say you you physically can't <laughs> go you know what like you're, you're, you're looking for stuff and um, yeah there are there are a lot of products with um, which have sort of milk in them, even if it's even if it's something annoying like 
it'll be plant-based and then there'll be like 0.3% milk powder or something. You do come across that sometimes, but it's, there's so, so many, um, products that are, um, totally vegan that are processed. And obviously when it comes to unprocessed things, it's the most simple thing in the world. Cause it's like, is it a vegetable? Is it a nut? You know, is it a seed <laughs> or, or did it come from an animal? That's it. There's no, there's nothing confusing about it. You know, you're like, Oh, what's this? It's a piece of ham. Obviously that's not vegan. Oh, this is a, an apple. You know, you get people that say, oh, I've never eaten anything vegan. You're like, what? You've never eaten a banana. You know, it really, when you, when you start to assess, um, you know, you, your dietary choices, um, and, and in terms of what you wear and stuff, cause it's not just limited to diet. A lot of people think, oh, it's a, it's a diet. I mean, that's, that's not the case. Um, you know, there are so many other things that do come into it, but again, it's just things that you get used to very quickly. Um, and if you're, if you're, if you're serious about it, which I think most people are, you know, maybe for the first month or something, it's a bit like, oh, you know, you might make mistakes and things. That's fine. But after, you know, a year, two years, you know, five years is, is not even, it's not even a consideration anymore. You know, this stuff, you don't have to spend time thinking about it, you know, 2020 and actually for the last, um, I don't know, probably God, two, three years, at least it's been so, so easy to buy vegan products because they're just anywhere you go. I mean, you don't have to go. I mean, I imagine, you know, 10 years ago, you'd have to go to some kind of specialist, um, stores or whatever to, um, to pick up, um, vegan stuff. I mean, that's not strictly true in the sense that, you know, any shop's going to sell vegan stuff because at the end of the day, if you eat fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, legumes, whatever, you know, I mean, that's vegan stuff, you know, you don't have to have things like, um, you know, a special, um, you know, agave syrup, <laughs> you know, you don't have to be getting stuff like, um, uh, you know, fries, uh, tofu dogs and, you know, that, that stuff's nice, but, um, not everyone eats it anyway. And it's not, it's not necessary. So I'd say it's absolutely easy anyway um to 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 eat vegan stuff because again it's it's just things which don't you know come from animals um but if you want the if you want things like ice cream and um i don't know like sweets and um i mean even things like oreos are vegan i mean you don't they don't have to be special um vegan products you know there's a lot of things which are just vegan anyway um and there are so many sites you can just look up, you know, popular, I mean, they typically refer to it as accidentally vegan. There's loads of stuff like that. And, and a lot of things you people eat anyway are vegan. You know, they'd say, oh, you know, I don't like vegan food, but a lot of the stuff they eat is just vegan anyway. There's, they don't realize it is because they don't think about it. And I think that's, that's most of it. It's, it's when you, when you decide to change up your diet, whether it's for ethical reasons, health reasons, whether it's, um, maybe some kind of, um, like I said, like a religious, um, kind of, um, maybe a set of rules you have to follow when you actually start thinking about it, you just become more conscious about what you're eating. And, um, yeah, once, once you, um, look through the kind of stuff you can eat and can't, it's, it's really simple and certainly much, much easier now than it, than it used to be. Some stuff is overpriced. I mean, some of the sort of mock meats or, um, stuff like, um, trying to think of a good example um you know th th there are certainly products anyway you can buy which are a lot more expensive if you buy like a fancy hipster vegan thing than you were to buy the the regular version but at the end of the day it's not necessary to eat these things you know um like i've got a friend well i say we've got a friend who pretty much exclusively eats um fries chicken nuggets and uh that, that's that, that's totally unfair but um let's say it's a lot of them anyway and um some people you know maybe they don't like them maybe they think they're pricey or something but it's not necessary to eat those things so all i'd say is um it it, it depends on on a lot of things like you know your your financial situation um just simply what, what you like what you don't like um but yeah is it easy absolutely um has it always been easy 
maybe not as much as it is now, but um, certainly it's been possible. I mean, veganism is is not a new thing. You know, I know a lot of people <laughs> perceive it to be, but it's absolutely um, not something recent. It's just a lot more popular now than it was before. Cool, cool. Thank you for that. Um, my next question would be, um, what do you make of like not vegan fast food or junk food exactly, but say for instance KFC. You know, KFC have this new vegan burger that came out in like uh, January this year. Um, where do you stand on that? as a vegan, not physically stand on the burger. I mean, you could, but it'd be a waste of money. But like, it seems to be a split opinion between like, it's a good thing that they're doing vegan options like that. Maybe people who uh, wouldn't have initially tried something vegan would try a vegan KFC burger and then be like, oh, that's amazing. I'll eat more vegan food. Or is it more of a feeling that you would never set foot in fucking KFC anyway. Why would I want to go in there and get vegan food? Like the animal abuses are, it's like the, it's like the Holocaust for chickens, isn't it? At KFC. So why would you, as a vegan, would you go into KFC for vegan food? Do you know what I mean? Is that, how do you feel about like KFC and stuff? I'm sure others will follow having vegan options. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Or like both? <laughs> yeah um yeah where to start so i mean it is it's just both I, I don't think it's necessary for people to take a stance um either it's good or it's bad um because frankly that the, the points for either side are valid um for me personally no I, I haven't tried the um kfc stuff just in the same way that like if mcdonald's came out with a vegan burger i'm not gonna be rushing down to Mackey D's, you know, it's, um, and that's for a variety of reasons. Um, not just for the, uh, you know, absolute, you know, I mean, Billy, I mean, you know, it's, it's hard to even imagine for us how many animals will have been killed, um, as a result of, um, companies, uh, like McDonald's or KFC, but, um, it's not just about that. It's also, um, and, you know, environmentally, I mean, the, uh, massive amounts of um, environmental devastation have been caused by uh, McDonald's. Um, and I'm sure all these come, I mean, like, actually, I'm, I'm pretty sure, yeah, Burger King have the, um, I can't remember what it's what it's called in the UK, but they're, they're plant based burger anyway. I know they call it the Impossible Whopper anyway in the US. And I can't remember if they have the same name here or what, but I know it's not strictly speaking a vegan burger. Um, and, um, same with KFC. I th I think there it's something like you know it's plant based. Whether or not it's fully vegan, I don't know. But um, f is it a good thing that they're selling that? Well, yeah. I mean, of course, it's a good thing. Um, you know, as a choice, if if you have a choice between a company only selling animal products and selling some non-animal products, then of course that's that's preferable. Um, it's better to have the option. Does that mean I'll be going there and trying it? No, um, you know, it's not necessary for me because at the end of the day, <laughs> you can buy um, vegan chicken burgers at a whole bunch of places which don't also um, contribute to, you know, billions of, of deaths of um, animals, whether it's chickens for, you know, KFC or um, cattle, you know, for Burger King, McDonald's, whatever. Um, it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, on the other hand, like, as you pointed out, it, it may be the case that there'll be some people that try it and think, you know what, I really like this. There's some people, like, I remember watching, um, <laughs> literally just a couple of days ago, I watched the um, a food review from um, Grime Report TV, just on YouTube, where the guy was trying out the um, the Burger King burger. And it's not, obviously not, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the old angry shopkeeper, but obviously not a vegan, um, you know, <laughs> And um, he was saying, you know, do you know what? Better than their their other burgers, or or and and saying, you know what? Like, it's not the best thing ever, but you know, he liked it anyway. And um, now, if you, so, if you, if people come at it from a position of not being really invested in the ethics of it, but they're just like, oh, I met, I'll just try it, and if they like it, and then they buy it again, 
yeah, obviously that's better than continuing to always buy the um, the meat based burger. So that that's totally true and that's valid. Um, so I, I don't think it's necessary, but I don't think it's necessary to say, you know, that's the end of it. Like, oh, so it's a good thing, full stop. You know, it's also true that these companies, I mean, as we said, are, are, are responsible for such a huge amount of suffering. And um, I mean, suffering, not just of the animals, but also of the people that, you know, habitually eat there. I mean, we have massive issues in this country with obesity. The US is just off. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I don't even need to say it. You know, any anyone listening um, who's familiar with the 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 sort of state of um, people's health in 2020, and it's been like that for a long time. This isn't like a new thing. You know, people are continually eating fast food. You know, um, people are dying of heart attacks left, right, and center, um, strokes. Um, suffering from you know being overweight or having respiratory issues um there's all there's all this stuff you know that's related to the consumption of of poor food basically and um so do i think that i'm going to start start going there well no does that mean i'd i'd you know demonize someone who would go to KFC and try their vegan products or, or vegetarian products, which whichever is more applicable. Um, n- n- no, um, like because there there might be a positive result in the lot in the long run from that. Um, and also, you know, veganism isn't about health. Um, it, it it is in part, but it's not a, it's not a position you would take purely to, you know. Um, you know, live live for another five or ten years you know it's not it, it, it's an ethical position um so to be honest i mean i know a lot of people who are um vegan on our um you know either yeah emaciated skinny or just fat as fuck you know it's not and that's their business you know um obviously it's not preferable to be a husky boy but you know if you want to be then whatever the the reason we abstain from eating animal products is to avoid causing unnecessary harm and suffering um to animals you know that's it so um you know do i think it's great that um kfc do a vegan burger or like i said i don't know if it's fully vegan but or burger king or whoever and i'm sure that mcdonald's will do i mean i'm sure i i know they do like they do vegetarian stuff um you know is it good yeah it's it's better than not but you know, I don't think it's necessary to say, yeah, it's great or no, it's awful. Um, so pe- people can make their own minds up. There's there's just some good, there's some bad involved with it. And my final question would be, it's kind of hard to word it, but it's more of a, like a nutritional thing. Like if someone brings up being vegan, a lot, a lot of like what you seem to get from meat eaters is like, oh, it's not healthy or it's not sustainable. Um, or, you know, it's kind of has this, maybe not, again, not so much now, but maybe before you had this kind of like association with being like malnourished or like weak or just thin or whatever, you know, these thinner, thin vegans. This is like an Immortal Technique song where he's like, uh, all you vegans look like the only hip hop motherfuckers on Schindler's list and like shit like that. But like, obviously you do, I'm not saying you're a professional bodybuilder. I don't know, maybe you are now. It's been a while since I've spoke to you properly. But um, you do like weightlifting and, and stuff like that. And you have a lot of interest in bodybuilding and the nutritional side of being vegan. So what my question is, it's probably, it's a bit of a tricky one to ask, let alone answer. But what would you say to a meat eater with the, with the argument like, it's not healthy to be a vegan? Like, is there any like nutritional kind of not even not evidence, but like anecdotal evidence you can give that being a vegan is is healthy and you're not actually losing out by not being a uh, by be, not being a meat eater? So like you know people say like um, uh, what do they say like yeah you you missing B12 or you know we were supposed to eat meat because we got incisors and all this shite. Um, so yeah, what what was your views on that? That's a bit of a muddled one. That is, I don't really know how to word it because um, I'm not really clued up on it all myself. 
but um, I know you're like uh, frequently at the gym and uh, are into like health and nutrition and stuff. So I was wondering what your you could offer on that, if anything at all. Yeah, I mean, I I think. It, it certainly was a stereotype before. I don't know. You'll still hear people um, sort of saying shit like that now. And, um, you know, sometimes it is true. I mean, you know, there are definitely some vegans who um, under eat or, um, you know, they're only going to eat sort of like very, very limited or a very restricted diet um, and end up becoming, you know, very, very thin. Um, a lot of people, of course, go vegan, you know, in a lot of ways to lose weight. Um, so it's, it's obviously it is possible because um, if you eat less processed foods, obviously you're going to lose weight. But it just depends on what the diet's like. I mean, I know you said like, yeah, there's that perception of it, but um, it's not so much like that now. I mean, you've got guys like, I don't know, like P-Money or Jeremy, I mean, going vegan or whatever. And there's a lot of people in sort of um, less, I suppose in from backgrounds that weren't typically associated with um you know animal rights or whatever it, it's becoming more more well known more popular which i think is a good thing and certainly not certainly these people aren't all you know gaunt and um looking like they you know just sort of escaped from auschwitz or whatever so yeah i'd say that the the perception that you know people are um you know malnourished or whatever that's again just sometimes true but for the most part not not true at all um i've certainly you know never never had any issues um becoming too uh you know becoming underweight um since i um changed up my diet and actually i used to be a, a lot i mean i used to be very overweight I, I didn't mention that but back in sort of um 2011 2012 i was fucking obese um like 100% and um yeah a lot a lot healthier now than i was back then i wouldn't just attribute that to veganism though um maybe in part but um well definitely in part but um it's a combination of yeah having a better diet and also like you said just just exercising more all i'd say about the uh lifting weights and everything yeah the the lockdowns <laughs> you know caused uh some you know uh grief let's say i mean i obviously i haven't been able to use a gym since um before the the lockdown um went into place and I, I know that they're sort of you know i hope they're um talking about lifting it soon i mean that's a whole that's a whole another issue um part of me feels like god you know it's it's really irresponsible for them to um reopen the gyms but on the other hand if it's safe enough to hang out in a pub it seems pretty crazy you can't um actually go and do something that's um beneficial for your health but <laughs> but that is uh that's off topic i suppose um all i'd say is yeah um i personally never had any issues with it um you know i'm, I'm definitely not um, one of the strongest guys in the gym but then i'm not one of the weakest either so i think you know so much factors into that if there's someone trying to say that um you can't be strong as a vegan. That's, I mean, you know, um, I suppose the best, the easiest thing is just to watch the game changers. Um, I don't think it's perfect film. There's, there's, there's a few things that I think are, um, you know, problematic with it, but I mean, broadly speaking, um, it is, it is, um, enlightening. Um, you see a lot of, uh, high level athletes in it. Um, you know, Patrick Baboumian is seen as the, um, sort of the go-to, guy because he's vegan and uh he won uh Ger germany's strongest man a few years ago um has got multiple world records but you know um only some of them were set as a vegan and back when he won the um uh the world's uh, the sorry the um germany's strongest man uh he was vegetarian there so um anyway well i mean i'm 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 rambling but the point is that there's a whole array of different people um into sports at, at the highest levels who are vegan and people will say oh there's only a tiny amount of them but you've got to remember there's only a tiny fraction of people who are vegan period um if you look at any cross-section of um society um there's only going to be a tiny percentage of vegans unless you're looking at like the i don't know the <laughs> european cross-punk scene or 
I don't know, like some some survey of hipster cafes in Brighton or something, you're going to have a very small percentage of vegans. So the fact that there are people holding world records and people could be competing in stuff like, um, you know, powerlifting, um, you know, Olympic weightlifting. Um, there are some in bodybuilding. It's not, it's not very prevalent. Um, you've got a lot of bodybuilders who are sort of like amateur guys like, um, Brian Turner, um, or someone like uh, Nimoy Delgado. I mean, he has his pro card, to be fair. Um, he's not a bodybuilder in the strict sense because he's competing in, I think it's men's physique. Um, and, um, you know, he's he's not, he, you know, he's not, not like, um, he's certainly not like a, like a main player or something, you know. I mean, the, the, the men's physique division is, is, is super deep, though. So, I mean, so, so many com- competitors. Um He's not, um, he's not like a, a really competitive guy, but I mean, still, if you compare like his physique to like the average slob, then I mean, it's just, it is insane. Um, with, with bodybuilding specifically, I think it's a little bit misleading though, to talk about diet too much. Cause at the end of the day, anyone in the uh, open men's division is going to be, um, on steroids. And at the end of the day, you know, if you look at somebody who's massive, it's, it's it's basically that like steroids make you massive, not eating chicken and broccoli and rice. You know, um, not to say you can't get big as a vegan or as a as a um, someone who's not using PEDs, but um, I think there's often the kind of the arguments people have about building muscle are, are sort of um, a little bit silly because they're just they're just not they're just not well informed. Um, you know, can you, can you get strong? Can you build muscle on a vegan diet or living as a vegan? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I, I don't, and I don't think there's anyone, um, who, who would seriously assert, um, that you can't at the end of the day, being big is, is, you know, if you just want to be bigger and you want to be stronger or you want to be more athletic, it's about what you do. You know, it, it's, yeah, it's important to have a, um, a planned diet, but <laughs> basically everyone should have a planned diet um you know there's a there's a criticism of people i know you mentioned the b12 thing um a lot of people are deficient in b12 um most i I won't say most because i don't know the figures off the top of my head but a lot of people um when you know when, when they're surveyed um are deficient in b12 who do eat meat so and at the end of the day the b12 isn't something that's naturally um sort of it's not produced by like a cow, you know, um, cattle are fed B12, um, uh, supplements anyway. So, so whether or not you're getting the supplement through eating a steak or something, or you're just taking a supplement, you, you are supplementing. Um, that's the main thing to remember when talking about B12. Um, as far as the, the teeth thing, I, I think I, always ridiculous that like people say, oh, well, we've got canine, so we blah, blah, blah. Um, I, I, I don't, I, I think, you know, when people say stuff like this, it's just because they, they don't think about what they're saying. Um, you know, if you ask someone, let's say you have someone in front of you who's telling you, oh, well, look, mate, like I've got fucking canine, so blah, blah, blah. Yeah, all right. <laughs> if you ask that person to chase down, a, a you know, a, a, I don't know, like a pig and kill them with their claw, you know, their non-existent claws and and then devour them raw but with their, their teeth, it's, you know... I mean, you obviously can't do it. We're not, and and to the point at which, you know, it is ridiculous. It's it's not even really worth talking about because they know it. You know, if someone's trying to say, "Oh, look, I've got these teeth that are um, made for 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 hunting or whatever," I mean, just compare a, a human's. You know, you can just Google what you know what a human's um, teeth look like. You know, and then just compare it to something like a, I don't know, like people always say, oh, lions eat meat. Well, you're not a fucking lion, are you? You know, do you want to look at a, a, what a lion's, you know, teeth look like and its jaw and everything compared to yours? You know, our, our the way our um, teeth are, are, are much better for grinding up um, plant materials than for um, eating uh, eating meat. I mean, that's why you need... Um, to, to have, you know, like even, even something as simple as like, like, why do you need a steak knife? Or oh, it's because it's difficult to cut. Do you know what I mean? It, it, it's these really simple things that you think, look, if you take a couple of minutes to think about it, you know, that we're not prepared or we're not, um, you know, evolved 
to be um, <laughs> chasing down uh, gazelle on the on the plains or whatever, and 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 sort of all um, about them, you know, like a like a I don't know. I I, I mean, you know, I, I'm I'm kind of losing my thread a bit, but the thing is, there's all these little arguments which people make, um, which really just they 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 come across to me as someone who's already decided that what they're saying is right and they're not particularly concerned with the 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 quality of what they're saying um you know that the arguments they use to 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 defend their position um and and that can be true of vegans as well like i've heard some vegans um say um sort of make claims which i don't think are, are, are particularly true um you know to back up their position but you know it's really unnecessary to do so essentially it's it's just an ethical position it's really simple to understand um to the point where i think if, if someone claims they don't understand it um they you know either they can't read or they you know maybe they never went to school or you know you'd have to have a very very low um, level of intelligence not to understand it um in in terms of anecdotal anecdotal stuff about um you know you know, health, whether or not it's healthy to be vegan or not. Um, I, I wouldn't bother talking about my own health or, or um, I just, I wouldn't get into an anecdotal stories about it because I, I don't think it's necessary to, um, there have been these huge studies done by, you know, um, organizations who, and, and, and studies that have been peer reviewed. I think that that's important. Um, that show that veganism is, is perfectly healthy and can, can help, um, improve people's health who are suffering from maybe, um, certain chronic illnesses. Um, so, I mean, I just, I mean, this literally took about, I don't know, 10 seconds to find. Um, so I'm just going to read out a, a quote. Um, it is the position of the American Dietetic Association that appropriately planned vegetarian diets, including total vegetarian or vegan diets, are healthful, nutritionally adequate, and may provide health benefits in the prevention and treatment of certain diseases. Well-planned vegetarian diets are appropriate for individuals during all stages of the life cycle, including pregnancy, lactation, infancy, childhood, and adolescence, and for athletes. Um, you know, on top of that, the BDA, so the British Dietetic Association, um, just found a quote. So a balanced vegan diet can be enjoyed by children and adults, including during pregnancy and breastfeeding, if the nutritional intake is well planned. So, you know, really straightforward positions. It's not for me. I mean, I'm not a doctor. I don't, you know, I've not studied dietetics. Um, but if if these massive organizations are saying, I mean, and, and I should say as well, these are just the first two I found after about, about 30 seconds, you know, just Googled it. Um, I know there's a lot more, um, which it was to say essentially the, the very same thing. Um, so I don't think it's any time spent debating whether or not it's healthy is, is time wasted. Um, it, we, we already know from the ex experts that it's perfectly healthy. Um, in fact, as it says, in, in a lot of cases, um, healthier when it comes to certain um, medical issues, um, chronic conditions, it can improve your health. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't honestly, I wouldn't waste any time um, even thinking about it. And I don't know. I don't know how the, the whole um, pod, podcast is going to be structured, of course. But if you find <laughs> at any points there's these. Um, people are saying, oh, well, I don't know about this, or maybe it's not healthy to just refer to those two um, very clear statements. Um, if there's anyone, I mean, maybe there is someone on the podcast who's more well qualified than the uh, British Dietetic Association or the American equivalent, maybe. But um, I would say I'm not as well <laughs> qualified, so I'm happy to defer to them. Um I'll, I'll try and be a little bit more concise now. Um, I just want to get back to the point about, um, you know, we, we were kind of talking about weightlifting and stuff and, um, you know, just general sort of health and fitness. Um, I think if anyone's interested in, in that uh, side of things when it comes to veganism, there's absolutely loads of content on um, YouTube um, that, that relates to that. Um, I've already mentioned Brian Turner. He's a popular YouTuber. 
Uh, it says, say, you know, he's a natural vegan bodybuilder, not a pro, uh, someone who um, I know has competed, but not, you know, he doesn't have a pro card or anything. Um, and also um, a whole other bunch of people. Um, the channel That's Good Money is run by a vegan guy, um, sort of a little bit of an older guy. Um, I think he's in his, I believe he's in his 50s, um, really, really fit guy. Um, super, you know, into calisthenics, uh, loads and loads of calisthenics uh, athletes. Um, you can look up people like um, Scott Bernhard, uh, Golden Arms is a good one. Not been vegan super long, but again, really good content. You can see a lot of his workouts on the That's Good Money channel. Um, trying to think who else. Um, to be honest, there's, there's, there's so many. Once you actually start going into it it's it's a lot that you see like oh like people that i didn't realize i was following a guy called bam bam on youtube for a while really really good body weight workouts turns out uh, he's a vegan guy as well um so a lot more and a lot more people who are not from the typical kind of mm, like hipsterish background because i think a lot of people perceived veganism to be something which was just, you know, it, it was people in it for to be trendy, and and that's not that's not the case anymore. I think a lot more people are becoming more educated, and seeing that actually you can build a good physique. What <laughs> I say, good, <laughs> a pretty amazing physique on, um, and and have a vegan lifestyle, and in a lot of ways a better physique, um, because again, when you're more conscious of what you're eating you start to realize that a lot of the things you, you were eating before are not um, beneficial for your health. Um, and I'm not saying, I mean, fucking hell, like I'm, I'm certainly not a, uh, a great example of someone with a, <laughs> you know, like I don't have the, the, the body of a, of a, of a Greek uh, God, you know, um, working on it. But uh, there are plenty of those people out there who are, um, you know, working really hard, have a lot of content that's obviously free to check out and also um, give a lot of knowledge. Um, there's a guy, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Um, I think it's someone, oh, someone Blackstar. I'll, I'll try, I'll try and uh, find it in a sec, but you know, all, older guys as well who are putting up content, who are um, not eating any animal products and are in a lot better shape than, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm 30. I know you're, uh, I, I guess same age as me or, or maybe slightly older, but you know, you see these people who are in their, um, sort of late fifties, early sixties, even late sixties who, <laughs> you know, are looking incredible. And it's, it, it just shows that, um, you don't need to eat animal products. You know, there's a lot of people out there who eat a standard diet, um, who are, can, can barely walk at 40. Um, so yeah, I re I really think the idea that, um, you, you have to eat animal products to be healthy is a complete nonsense. And yeah, that, that guy is red shot black star. That's his name. Couldn't think. Um, once you've seen him, it, 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 you can't forget him. This old, old guy with uh, a massive, uh, dyed red beard. <laughs> he looks pretty skits, but yeah, crazy, crazy level of fitness. Um, amazing athleticism and uh, I don't know how old he is but he's uh, I mean over 50 anyway and uh, really inspiring cheers yeah that's that's it basically so the last thing I'd just like to add is is there anything you would like to say that that could anything at all hashtag save Percy I don't know yeah cool yeah man I, to be honest I'd love to fucking big up Percy Pig but the thing is, I think since they swapped it around from having the the standard Percy's and the vegetarian Percy's, as far as I know, the Percy's that are around now aren't vegan. I, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think they are. Whereas before, I think it was it was something. I mean, again, I, I might be wrong, but as far as I remember it, the old vegetarian Percy's didn't have beeswax, whereas I think the new ones do, or something like that. Maybe, again. Don't quote me on that, but so I'm I'm actually gonna, as tempting as it is, I'm going to respectfully um, turn down the the opportunity to give a shout out to the old uh, Percy Pig. 
as far as having a, a message to people, I think g given where we are now, that there's no real excuse to be ignorant about these things anymore. It's fair enough that we are conditioned to grow up thinking that eating these things are okay or to, you know, um, butcher, uh, whether it's ca cows or goats or whatever for their skin, um, to, you know, wear or whether it's, I mean, vivisection is a, is a massive thing as well. So, you know, when you're vegan, it's like, you even have to, you, you do have to think about things like when you buy toothpaste or other products, like to make sure they're not, they've not been tested on animals. Um, but the thing is we all have the information to hand now. So whenever, if you ever find yourself in a position where someone's criticizing people who use animal products or uh, use products that have been tested on animals, I think there's a, there's an obligation to find out that stuff for yourself. Like at the end of the day, I, I've said a lot in this, um, in this interview, which, you know, I can't verify for you because obviously, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just having this conversation, you know, I can't pull out all this information and put it under your nose. But the thing is, it's already there. All you have to do is take out your smartphone, open your laptop, whatever, just Google it, just go on YouTube, you know, type in, um, you know, truth about the dairy industry, look up a, a film like earthlings is like a little bit dated now. Cause of course I saw this back in 2013, but it's still just as relevant um, now as it was then. Um, I would check out the film Dominion. Um, I'm trying to think what else. You know, Vegucated is a good one, as far as I remember. You don't have to watch all of it, but if you literally just check out, or all of them, I should say, for me, watching Earthlings was enough. You know, I have seen others, but if you're claiming, no, this is okay, oh, you know, yeah, but I buy this, and oh, they treat the chickens dead well, yeah, you know, you don't know that until you've actually watched these things for yourself. Otherwise, you're just going on, you know, secondhand information. At the end of the day, there's no shame in not knowing these things. You know, I was 23 before I started, or no, 20... Mm, yeah, I was 22 when I, when I first stopped eating meat. And, um, you know... So I had lived for over two decades thinking that it was fine. You know, we're all we're all brought up in different ways, but you know, predominantly um, we are brought up in an environment which tells us it's okay to uh, force animals to you know mate with each other to steal away the uh, calves if it's from from cattle or whatever to then have them killed you know when they're only months old or to, you know, be doing shit like chopping their balls off with a razor and, you know, oh, it's okay to, you know, uh, you know, hit a cow in the head with a sledgehammer and stuff like this. I mean, obviously that's not <laughs> standard practice everywhere now, but we know that, you know, we, we or maybe know is the wrong word, but we're brought up to feel like we know it's okay. But that's conditioning, you know, and like I said, that's marketing. All these things come together to make you feel as if you're not doing anything wrong because they want you to keep spending money, you know, and it's not for our health. It's not for our um, longevity and it's certainly not something which is compassionate. So yeah, I'd say for sure, before you uh, engage in these big arguments and actually to be honest, it's relevant for the podcast. If you've got a group of people, you guys, I'm not familiar with all you guys, obviously, but, um, if you're going to sit down for, you know, an hour, two hours, however long it's going to be and discuss veganism, then I feel like there's there's an obligation for you guys to have watched Earthlings, at least, at least, you know, it's free. You can watch it on YouTube. It, there's no there's no there's no sacrifice. You know, you're learning something. You're exposing yourself to something which you guys want to discuss. So it's important to be aware of what it is you're talking about. You know, and that way, when I say all oh, these things are awful or when other people you're, you're going to have conversations with are saying, yeah, it's really awful. You're not just taking them at their word, you know, or, or thinking, oh, well, I heard it's not that bad. You don't you don't need to do that. That's just being willfully ignorant.
you know at this point in time when information is at our fingertips at no cost or <laughs> you know the cost of some data on your phone you know what i mean or paying your internet subscription or whatever it's not good enough to say um oh well i don't know about that you know if you're really going to argue with someone about it and say that it's okay to do it look it up you know actually actually see what it is that you're discussing you know there's so many such there's so many sort of arguments which are thrown around um stuff about you know you're not getting enough protein that's a big one which just again shows a complete lack of understanding of, of nutrition um there's things like oh i mean i mentioned earlier oh yeah but you wouldn't say that it's wrong for a lion to eat a gazelle well okay but we don't base our behavior on what lions do or don't do you know um but i mean a lion would fucking sniff each other's butt in it as a greeting now you're not going to do that are you well <laughs> i mean i've not witnessed you do that and i <laughs> so i should hope not but it's this it's this kind of want to take something which maybe it sounds good to people maybe they just think it sounds cool i don't know but there's a lot of these arguments which just melt away when you examine them for for sort of you know 30 seconds to a minute um another big one is is plants you know old oh, plants feel pain too well plants don't have a brain plants don't have a central nervous system so we know they don't feel pain that's not <laughs> you know that's not open to debate um and and I think there's there's so much of that stuff which is really such a waste of time. Um, the other thing is 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 this this feeling that um, <laughs> vegans are pushy, or um, the feeling that you I say you know let's say there's a non-vegan listening who feels oh well I'm being attacked by this oh this is this is so unfair on me. The idea that the that the that a person who is eating animal products is the victim is frankly ridiculous i mean if you're let's say if you have the right to force an animal to live in captivity to be forcibly bred to be kept in a confined space or not or, or maybe not so confined a space but in either way either situation they are being confined to be killed often at a very young age i mean we're talking months or even seconds i mean for baby chicks who are born well, I say born for hatchlings who um, any male hatchlings are essentially going to be killed. I mean, it's either going to be gassed or ground up in a big sort of um, a sort of a grinder. And I mean, they're alive then for well, seconds being out of the out of their shell. And so if, if you feel that those kind of practices are OK, you're saying that's fine but you can't even bear to hear someone verbally <laughs> criticize you about your your um your choices frankly that's fucking pathetic <laughs> i mean really it's like it, it would be insulting to, to a baby to say it's 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 childish you know it's it's so weak um that it's it's i mean it is ludicrous and it is laughable but also just deeply sad that people feel so entitled to do these horrific things or engage with these horrific um, practices but they don't even want people to tell them that what they're doing is unethical or cruel which it blatantly is and i suppose the the final thing which i'd leave off on is i know of course that in the in the context of the podcast there's going to be discussion back of back and forth about you know what's acceptable what's right what's wrong blah 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 i think the best i suppose benchmark to we like, we can use is if you're talking about a a practice whether it's the you know castration of pigs let's say or it's um cutting off of birds beaks or you know um i don't know slicing open a cow's throat with a huge blade whether it's any of those things 
or even something like you know rubbing um infectants into into a rabbit's eye or you know in a, in a lab or you know treating i don't know f- sort of um let's say breaking a monkey's bones or something to to examine the, the the effects of the injury on them you know all of these kinds of things it doesn't really matter which one you select if you think if 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 you feel yourself saying well actually i i think it's okay because da 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 the the question to ask is i mean i know you have have um i think what is it two dogs now two puppies well i suppose they're not really puppies anymore but you know the 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 question to ask is would you be happy to put your own um animal through that or your or yourself i mean that's another you know fair um point or say you have a have a child like would you feel comfortable doing that to someone you know and especially with pets because we do have this distinction between you know people and just other animals and that's fine at the end of the day you know i respect that i obviously feel closer to like my own family than i would to um you know <laughs> an an a random lamb in a field somewhere like obviously you know obviously we we recognize that but when you think about pets the difference between your own cat your own dog your own i don't know lizard or whatever you happen to own um and other animals is i mean there's no intellectual reason there's no there's no objective reason that they are of more or less value you know t- so to be consistent with this thing with these things you think look if it's okay if you're saying it's it's not um if it's not unethical to cut the head off of a goat for example well then would you be happy to have your dog or your kitten put in the same position and if you wouldn't do it to them well why wouldn't you do it to them if it's not cruel what's the problem if it's not unethical to do it then why wouldn't you do it you know of course that the, the reality is we know it's unethical we know it's cruel we know it causes suffering and it's it's really that simple and i think another thing which is it is really crucial to to try and bear in mind is that these choices are essentially choices about whether or not you are going to behave in a kind way or in a cruel way you know are you going to be someone who conducts themselves in a cruel manner a manner which causes suffering unnecessary suffering or are you going to be someone who's going to conduct themselves with love and with compassion you know there there are hundreds of thousands of choices we make all throughout our lives and i think we we like to think that we try to be as kind as possible you know no, no there there are not many people who uh, you know wantonly behave in a cruel fashion and feel proud of that and when you think about your choices of what you're going to wear what you're going to eat you know just things you're going to purchase stuff you're going to engage with the 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 choice isn't between doing something really cruel and doing something a bit cruel like a lot of people will say oh yeah but oh i i wouldn't eat meat from a factory farm oh that's really mean i don't eat meat from you know a local farm you know that's the choice between being a complete fucking dickhead and um a bit less of a dickhead you know you don't have to be a dickhead you can just be nice you know you don't ha- you know it's like when i when i let's say we were going to meet up and the and the way i introduce myself to you is to hit you in the face with a rock you know once you, i mean i'm you know once you recover from the the shock of it i suppose if you say well you know what the fuck are you doing to me and i say oh well mate like you know i didn't stab you you know <laughs> the choice isn't whether i greet you by stabbing you with a knife or hitting you in the head with a rock in the same way that we don't have a choice between oh chopping a pig's head off with a with a sword or electrocuting it first so it doesn't feel that 
you don't have to do either you don't you're not, we're not compelled to do anything cruel you know it, it, it it's it's uh it's 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 sort of a, a an argument between two positions which are completely unnecessary you know you don't need to cause suffering and pain to animals any more than you do to people in fact there's probably situations where you're more, you're much more likely <laughs> to have to <laughs> inflict some kind of pain on a person than you are on an animal you know when was the last time you were driving along and a, and a fucking cow came and assaulted you, you know, tried to mug you, you know, when was the last time you, yeah, say you're going for a jog and a pig comes up behind you and starts fucking ha harassing you, you know, I mean, a, a real pig f for clarity. Um, so I really don't feel that it's, 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 it, you know, if the, if the conversation ever gets to a point where, the discussion is about degrees of suffering. It's it's gone off topic, you know. That the, the basic point is: Are you is what you're doing kind, you know? And could you be kinder, you know? And if and if the answer is, yeah, I don't need. I guess I don't need to do this. Well, then you're being a fucking dick, you know. In the same way that if you stamp on a dog's head, or you you take a little kitten, and you sling it in a meat grinder. That's no more or less cruel than doing that to chicks when they're first hatched out, you know. That's, I mean, that's a, that's an egg industry thing. But again, I mean, you know, I'm sure that will come up. I mean, I'm sure you guys are going to research all this stuff before you, you edit it all together, so you'll know what I'm talking about. But um, that's essentially it. You know, you don't have to be cruel. You don't have to cause suffering. It's a choice, and if you choose to be cruel unnecessarily then you're being a douchebag. Anyway, yeah, pretty, pretty bleak. <laughs> but, you know, again, thanks for, you know, just just um, sort of firing some questions at me. I definitely would have <laughs> would have gone off topic at, at points. But, you know, it's, um, I think definitely things are getting better. Veganism's way more popular now than it ever, ever, ever was before. Um, you know, people are, people are definitely learning more about it. And I think the more people that go vegan, you know, the better it's going to be, um, for the environment, the better it's going to be for people's health. And, um, definitely, definitely it's going to be better for the animals as a whole. So, um, you know, thanks for asking me some questions and, uh, yeah, hope, uh, <laughs> this doesn't end up being as, uh, <laughs> sort of, um, Mm, divisive as as as, it, as as I can imagine it might be. <laughs> Just a note on this one uh, that you brought up the two dogs. Um, you're absolutely right, man. Um, I got my first dog, uh, Arthur, um, around the time we were preparing for the Somnapnia tour. So that was May 2018. Um, and that was like easily like 50% a big factor in deciding to go vegetarian. Like I feel like in 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 light of all this these vegan facts being vegetarian isn't really good enough but like you know i feel like if i i don't know i feel like i need to go vegan <laughs> at some point in my life i've been a vegetarian for two years i need to pull my finger out and 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 just go full uh you know full 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 vegan but like yeah with the dog so we you know there was we we're having discussions back and forth probably due to just preparing for the tour about food and stuff um and I, it was a lot of pressure off my from my sister. We had a family get together for my mother's sixtieth, and uh, her, m my sister, and my my mother are um, vegan, and um, my dad isn't. He's a meat eater, and um, I remember we had a few few too many drinks, and quite a heated conversation um, arose between my sister and my dad. You know, nothing nothing nasty. Just you know, it's got a bit, you know, few too many uh, few, few too many bevies. It got a bit heated, and. Um, you know, my sister was going all full, full vegan activist on, on my dad. And, you know, and I was like, first I was like, oh, just shut the fuck up. Um, but then like, as I sat there, I realized I was on the wrong side of the argument. Uh, and then like, it was between that and all discussions we were having and having a dog. And I was like, well, could I eat the dog? Do you know what I mean? Could I like bake my dog in the oven? You know what I mean? And, and it, it, people go like, oh, fuck off. You would never do that. But like, it is, man. What's the difference? What's the difference between a dog 
and a, and a pig. You know what I mean? People keep pigs as pets now. You know, um, true story. I once said I was looking after a pet pig for someone, and I, I made I was making ham sandwiches, and it and it bit me when I was making a ham sandwich. So they know, man. They know, you know. <laughs> that's going. Uh, that's going way back. That is. But yeah, I mean, that's great now. And, and even now, looking like you know, you say as as humans, should you be imagine yourself in that situation? Like my son's just been born. You know, you say about the chicks and shit. Like, my son's just been born. Let's just throw him into a fucking grinder now, and you know, turn him into human nuggets, like soylent nuggets. You know, and I don't know. It's always been there in the back of my head because, like, I've always been into grind, and obviously you get like the sicker side of grind, like you know, your porno grind, your gore grind, and everyone's like, ah, oh, it's really fast and it's got you know stupid fucking lyrics, and you know, it's sick and it's about chopping up people, and it's like the music equivalent of horror movies, but. You know that's that's like the that's like the side of grindcore and stuff that people don't see. Like obviously, more traditional grindcore is is more like um, punk based, and like you get all that like anarchist or like vegetarian or vegan kind of activism. A lot of like a lot of my favorite bands are you know vegan. I mean, just look at uh, Agathocles or fucking Haggis, or, you know, all shit like that. Carcass, maybe not vegans, but they were vegetarian, and like that inspired all that mad like you know, gore shit. Like, basically, vegetarianism started gore grind, essentially, um, which is nuts. Um, cattle decapitation as well. You know, so it's always been there. You know, it's been like, you know, you know these these cool kids are into being, not eating meat. You know, this is something I should check out, but it took me a while to get there. I'm rambling now. Yeah, so just to um, just to come back to the, the what you said about the you know the dogs and keeping the pig and everything. I mean, all I can say is yeah. Um, you know, I think often we're because we want to interact, not just you and I, but people in general want to interact in a more um, sort of mm, affable way. You know, we want each other to we we want to get along. We typically don't want to be having these. Um, big arguments or being overly critical of one another because you 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 need to function you know socially but at the end of the day you know when you say oh i think i should go vegan well <laughs> i mean <laughs> obviously yeah i mean <laughs> you know and 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 i think that the the silly thing is that a lot of vegans go too much in the opposite direction where they'll they'll because they don't want to come across as too aggressive or too like oh is they're milit being militant um they'll say things like oh you know no but it, you know it's your choice you know it's up to you like obviously i'm not judging you what you want to eat this is just what i want to do you know because just like i personally don't think it's it's right to harm animals but the, not that there's anything wrong if you want to do it like that's fine and you think, well, all all you essentially end up doing is is being an well, a being a fucking apologist, obviously, and b you 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 make excuses for other people's, um, you know, poor decisions, you know, and 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 that actually sort of um, excusing them f for doing that, I think, is is really really negative. Um, you know, after all, let's say you you you. I mean, we talk about your, you know, you mentioned the dogs or whatever. I mean, if you came down and, um, you know, someone had your dog and they were, uh, I mean, you said about the grinder. Um, I mean, the gr the funny thing is the male chicks aren't, because I said about the grinder, they're not to be turned into anything to be eaten. They're just, that's just an easy way of killing them. Um, you know, male chicks are um, just not, they're not, um, you know, they're a drain financially speaking, because of course, you know the, the the if they grow up to be cocks they can't they can't produce eggs so there's just no point in having them so they're they're killed sometimes they're gassed or just crushed um but let's say you go in and someone's got your dog and they're throwing it into a into a grind like just like conscious fully conscious throwing it into a grinder i mean i doubt the response will be like oh sorry um you know i just want to stop you there like no like totally fine if you want to continue like no, but it's just I I like I'm not judging you on what you're what you know. It's up to you if you want to kill the dog because it's like personal choice. But mm -hmm. I'm just saying like I personally would like rather you not do it because like the dog actually like probably like it'll probably cause them a lot of upset and like anxiety. You know, like is that the way you're really going to address an issue? No, but I think that's the way a lot of a lot of vegans do try and approach it, and a lot of non-vegans want 
us to approach it in that way because it makes them feel better about it. But the thing is, it's not my job to make other people feel better about the horrific choices they're making. You know, if, if they're going to cause suffering to animals, like it's not for me to to sort of like, you know, pat them on the head and like sort of give them a little back rub and say, no, no, it's going to be OK. Like you're a nice person. Like that's that's just living in a fantasy land, you know. Like we've got to fucking grow up. Oh, and and again, uh, sorry. And I have to say as well, funny thing about the Soylent thing is, um, Soylent was just soy lentils. You know, the book make I think it was called Make Room, Make Room. Um, is all awesome book which Soylent Green was was later based on. But there was no um, oh, they're reading people like that. Just wasn't a thing in 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 the original book. It made more sense because. You know the the the, the soylent stakes, which people went mental over, and they'd have all these riots about, um, were just soy, soy, um, and uh, like soybeans and lentils. It was just because there was no, they they couldn't produce meat anymore. They were living in a, you know, in the book there in this society where, um, you know, there's just there's just no resources. It's it's not sustainable to to um, to have million because I mean billions of animals are killed every year. Um, I, I, I mean, I can't look up the figure. I mean, hopefully someone, someone will look up these figures um, when, when you put together all this stuff. But, um, you know, billions and billions of animals are killed all the time. And, you know, when you have a rising population, it's just not sustainable. You know, you, you have to, because every animal, like let's say you say to take a cow, well, a cow is going to eat going to eat much 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 more you know whether it's soy or whether it's um some other kind of um like a grain or bean or whatever um than a human would so it, it it's crazy to um take huge huge um areas of land clear them of like you know because often it's it contributes to deforestation because we need the land to grow all this corn and other um sort of uh, crops and then we just feed it to animals so then we can eat the animals and you think guys like if you literally just <laughs> directly ate that yourselves you wouldn't need to to make it i mean people often say oh well you know you soy you shouldn't eat soy because it's so damaging to grow it well if people just ate soy directly we'd be producing a lot less than we do currently you know i mean it's it's really like i said it's, it's just a matter of looking up the the figures anyway sorry that was a massive rant all i meant to say was um in the book <laughs> They don't eat people, but um, anyway, whatever, make of that uh, what you will. And I just quickly want to say as well, um, thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Like, I, I, um, or talk to me rather. I know it's going to be part of a podcast. But yeah, thank you so much. Um, I was expecting like a quick 10, 15 minute thing, but this is like, you know, a good solid 40, 45 minutes of, um, of information and a lot of good information as well. Um, some of which I don't know we're going to be able to watch and stuff before the podcast, which is now Friday, tomorrow we're recording it. Um, so it might not be able to watch like those films and stuff, but I will mention that separately to the guys now. But yeah, just just um, thank you for all this information, uh, all these opinions and so on. Just cheers for that, for taking the time. And uh, yeah, nice one. Sound. Just want to say a huge thanks to Harry. Um now, uh, I was lucky enough to jump on uh, on tour with with one of Harry's um, well, with Harry's main project. That uh, Sean happened to be in uh, in another band with Harry at the same time, and I was very lucky to jump out on tour with them and experience firsthand some fantastic um, vegan food. And um, yeah, it was fantastic, a really good experience, which I'll always remember and always be grateful for. So, I'd like to thank Harry for getting on board for that. Anyway, um, I've got some facts and figures here if you guys are interested. I got on that. Um, yeah. So, one of them is what what percentage of the world is vegan? Now, in two thousand and nine, it was six hundred thousand vegans, or one point sixteen percent of the population. Uh, as of two thousand and twenty, how many vegans are in the UK? Now, according to the survey site Finder dot com, over two percent of Brits are currently vegan. And the poll results suggest that by the end of 2020, the number is set to double. That's quite a big gap uh, in the recent years compared to uh, the gap from what, 2006 to 20? You know, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's a good jump, like. Well, what are you saying, though? Is this it's forever increasing? 
And, uh, a lot of people, a lot of people think of veganism as a trend at the moment as well, which I know a lot of people get offended by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It's or a, phase. A, 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 phase, <laughs> a phase or a trend, but I, I know um, a lot of people are offended by that. But um, fact of the matter is, um, veganism is probably more popular now than it's ever been. Yeah. You know, regardless of your beliefs. Um, so one of the things I wanted to say as well, um, I wanted to talk a lot about the, the health benefits inside of stuff. Um, one of the one of the main things I was looking into: do, do vegans live a longer, healthier lifestyle? The answer seems to be yes. Um, now I had a look at like the NHS website and things like that, and which I'll be moving on to shortly. Um, but on average, um, to my research at least, uh, vegans and vegetarians do live longer and have lower mortality rates than meat eaters, and generally grow older with few health issues. And uh, clinical research has proven that um, apparently. Um, so. Each vegan apparently um, spares 30 animals' lives a year. That is a good old fact. Um, yeah, so. Um, that's like an, I guess that's like sort of a, an average of the average amount of meat people consume in a year, I would guess. Yeah. yeah I, imagine, I imagine you could also look at that, as you say, you could also look at that as you, you're eating 30 full animals yeah. a year then. Is that yeah. Cool? Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think that's what it's kind of. But yeah, you can look at it both ways, can't you? You can look at it as you can look at it as I'm saving thirty animals a year from the slaughterhouse, or I'm eating thirty animals a year. I guess it depends what animals. Yeah, yeah right. just, um, chickens are much smaller than cows, so you know. It, 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 saying that, if you do eat a lot of chicken, that number might even be more. You know, because if you have a oh Sunday, God, dinner, yeah. if you have a Sunday dinner every Sunday, and say now you have two legs with it, that's like a good chunk of the chicken, but. There. Yeah, yeah. Are them, are the, are them legs often from the same chicken though? In terms of like when you buy like chicken portions and stuff, how many, say like you like a pack of chicken portions. Yeah. How many chicken are in that pack of like chicken portions? That could be like four or five different chickens. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, more than likely, but I'd imagine the rest of the chicken is uh, is somewhere else in the supermarket though. Dog <laughs> food, even a lot of that stuff ends up in like you know dog, dog food. Pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but um. Veganism is great for the environment. Factory farming is significantly responsible for deforestation, greenhouse gas emissions, pollution, and water source shortages. Uh, so there's the, the environmental side of it as well, and also, as well as obviously the compassionism towards animals and a cruelty-free lifestyle. There's also the environmental aspect of it. Uh, as well, that has a good point of this. Uh, she mentioned um, she mentioned palm oils in a, like a glance in. A, can't say look, and then she was on about the factory farming, and I was like, hold on, oh, palm oils, uh, they de you know, deforestation and all that. But then she said that um, a lot of crops are grown just to sustain the uh, the animals themselves. And I thought, you know, that's, that's a great point. Like, I never never even considered yeah. that. I didn't consider Ooh, yeah. it. Yeah. But, like, it's the, the environmental thing is something that, especially in Beck's interview, I know I explained that um, that's something that I kind of i don't know focus on more i guess like i hate animal cruelty i really do but you know especially during this lockdown period like i said in that interview um you know because there's been no cars on the road or barely any cars on the road and you know factories have shut down there's been far less pollution and you know it, like the skies have been clearer and everything for the first time in you know 50 odd years or whatever um so you know stuff like factory farming that does you know pumps out all the the, the harmful gases into the environment this it, it does help when they're not there you know it will help if they're not there is is you know what the thing is and eventually we will there will come a time in probably not in our lifetime but somewhere down the line where we basically just farm ourselves out of existence it's just you know there's not going to be anything else to to uh you know no animals to 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 kill or be well, no because of climate change or a bit of both really but to be honest i think it's good you know yeah they keep breeding them to to do it or whatever but i don't think it's going to be sustainable long term like long term as in very long term not if we didn't if we didn't eat cows do you think they'd go extinct um to be fair cows are quite responsible on their own for <laughs> methane in the environment anyway you know um I don't know. I, I doubt it. I don't know. 
Tough one. Tough one to say, really. Uh, what else you got, Blake, huh? Um, Which country has the most vegetarians? India. India. Yeah. <laughs> um, 30, 38%. India is ranked top in the world with 38% of the top population being vegetarians. Vegetarian Vegetarianism in the region became popular after the introduction of Buddhism and Jainism. Now, I'm not too familiar with Jainism myself, but um, yeah, India is the most popular country in the world for non-meat eaters. Oh, and nice. as I said, with the when I, when I spoke to Andy, Andy spent three months out in India and yeah. obviously he said that how easy it was for him. And then um in terms of being a, a vegetarian that was a, a very easy um an easy trip i imagine yeah well they see certain animals as sacred don't they like the cow is sacred and stuff like that oh yeah yeah so they wouldn't do that i can i can give you i can give you the full list of god here actually oh, um, yeah. yeah second place is israel um vegetarianism in the country is mostly down again to uh religion which is judaism which restricts the consumption of animals. Then, uh, believe it or not, we have Taiwan. Um, Hokkien, Hakka, and Buddhism vegetarian practices have helped to cultivate a plant-based culture, culture within the nation. Um, followed by uh, Italy. Uh, in 2016, okay. the city of Turin proposed a meat reduction agenda targeted toward vegetarianism. Closely followed by Austria. Um, there are, in particular, Vienna, apparently, um, has lots of vegetarian outlets. And there's also the Austrian Ve Vegan Society, which was founded in 1999. And uh, it's, apparently it's been really rapidly growing there. Uh, Germany then comes in straight after. That's um, surprising. Yeah, with all the, of, the um, cultural uh, sausages and all that. That's surprising, Germany. Well, I was I was surprised with that myself. I was really surprised with your your, your bratwurst and things that they called. Yeah. But yeah. Um, apparently, Berlin is um, really popular for veganism and vegan establishments, yeah. and and um, yeah, so I was surprised with that as well. UK comes in straight after all, um, and apparently, um, many citizens started adopting the vegetarian lifestyle um, after the Second World War. Oh, me too. It'd be meat shortage, surely, because of that. Second, well, they had shortage of everything after the war. As well, though, wasn't it? It was probably, yeah. probably a factor that um, perhaps meat wasn't so readily available yeah. as well. Could yeah. Um, after that, we've got Brazil that comes in. Um, now, Brazil is associated with counterculture movements, uh, Eastern religions and philosophies, anarchism, punks, spiritism, indie youth subcultures, and New Ageism are all kind of. Oh. Within our vegan movement, um, I was surprised at Brazil. Um, yeah. Ireland then comes in. Um, the Vegan Society of Ireland is a voluntary and not for profit organization that was established in 2009. Um, that's basically just to promote vegan philosophy, vegan philosophy rather, and awareness of veganism. And uh, last then is Australia, and they have a vegetarian week, and that's held from the 1st to the 7th of October. On an annual basis, where so every year they have a vegetarian week, and um, that's, that's adapted to the trend by offering um, vegan, vegan and vegetarian versions of popular dishes, much like our friends in Greasy Vegan do, basically. Uh, yeah, so that's it. That's a, a comprehensive list there of the most popular vegan countries within the world. Vegetarian, sorry, vegetarian countries within the world. Right, surprising. I gotta say, some of them. Yeah. Especially Germany. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Germany. Yeah. Um, Germany, um, Germany, I was um, surprised at because they have the lovely sausages and whatnot yeah. they do, don't they? All that kind of stuff. And uh, everything's very well presented, isn't it? And your, your German Christmas markets and things and whatnot. So, yeah, I was surprised at that, definitely. Hmm. Uh, but um, in terms of a vegan diet, a vegan diet tends to be based around grains and other seeds, legumes, am I saying that right? Uh, mm -hmm. Particularly bean, fruits, vegetables. Um, edible mushrooms and nuts, um, meatless products based on soybeans, tofu, or wheat-based seitan are sources of plant protein, uh, commonly in the form of uh, vegetarian sausages, mince, veggie burgers, things like that. Um, I'll say, now, on the topic of veggie burgers, I had 
won from Tesco the other day. A jalapeno, one with, made with jalapenos and oh, stuff. Nice. Oh my god, it's banging! It's so good. I was like, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Ah, that is really good. I had, you know, I had cheese on top, like, so it's not really vegan, but like, I, you know, it was really nice. <laughs> it was really, really good. So. Even the ones from Weatherspoons are all right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If I had a few of them, yeah, they're lovely. Yeah, lovely. Can't they benefit for some people there, though. Um, uh, I spoke, I spoke to a lot of people, and um about things like that, like your, your easily accessible kind of like your weather spoon type places. And they say you could benefit from some vegan cheese in there, which I'd have to agree. I'd have to agree. Um, I had some um, facts from the NHS website, actually, directly from the NHS website in terms of like a lot of people think, I know Harry mentions in, in the interview as well, like about um, the uh, keeping fit and healthy side of it and things. Yeah. And uh, this is directly from the NHS website. Um now you can, and it is indeed possible, to get most of the nutrients you need from eating a varied and balanced vegan diet. So for a healthy vegan diet, it's recommended eat at least five portions or variety of fruit and vegetables every day. Base meals on potatoes, bread, rice and pasta, or other starchy carbohydrates. Choose whole grain, whole grain where possible. Have some dairy alternatives, such as soya drinks and yogurts and choose lower fat and lower sugar options. Eat some beans, pulses, and other proteins. Choose unsaturated oils and spreads, and eat in small amounts. Drink plenty of fluids. Um, they recommend um, six to eight cups of glasses a day uh, of water or whatever. Um, if you choose to include food and drinks that are high in fat, salt or sugar, have them less often and in smaller amounts. And uh, you can refer to the Eat Well Guide for more information about a healthy diet. Now, the Eat Well Guide applies to vegetarians, vegans, people of all ethnic origins, and those who are a healthy weight for their height, as well as those who are overweight, who are a little bit bigger. And But it's not suitable. Ah, going back now to what I said about children, that Eat Well Guide is not suitable for children under the age of two, as they have different needs, it says, by there. So that kind of ties in with what I said about introducing yeah. the child and stuff as well. Um, so that's that was, uh, that was quite interesting actually and very informative and that was directly from the NHS website it's kind of uh, straightforward really it's kind of I guess a lot of them are just common sense you know yeah yeah, um, yeah. Uh, like I I, I, know, I know Harry gives a cracking insight to that yeah. though um, as I've said back cracking yeah. on that but um, yeah. I looked into getting the right nutrients from a vegan diet now it says that with good planning and good understanding of what makes up a healthy, balanced vegan diet, you can absolutely get all the nutrients um, that your body needs. And now that's a common question. Am I getting the right proteins? Am I getting the right nutrients? Am I getting the right vitamins and stuff? Um, and, but I think you need to be a bit more versed if you're going for a vegetarian, uh, vegan diet than, than a meat eater diet. You need, you, you need to look into it. Like, you know, you can't just... I mean, uh, if you don't plan it properly, basically, you can you could miss out on on essential nutrients. You know, your calciums, uh, your ions, your vitamin B12s. Um, now, really. non-vegans will get most of the can calcium from like dairy foods and stuff, but vegans can get it from other foods. Now, some good sources of calcium um, for vegans include green leafy vegetables such as broccoli, cabbage, uh, but not spinach. Um, fortified unsweetened soya, rice and oat drinks, calcium set tofu, sesame seeds, and tahini. Uh, so, you know, it, it is there, but it does take a lot of research, I think. And, um, you know, it helps to go into this clued up on it to make sure that you are getting the right, um, you know, vitamins and nutrients and whatnot, I guess. Um, vitamin D um, for vegans. Uh, fortified fat spreads, breakfast cereals, unsweetened soya drinks, um, vitamin D supplements. But um, it's, they say to check the label to make sure the vitamin D used in a product is not of an animal origin if you are vegan. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for iron, for iron then, um, good sources of iron are in wholemeal bread and flour, pulses, breakfast cereals fortified with iron. Dark, leafy, dark green leafy vegetables such as watercress, broccoli, spring greens, nuts, dried fruits and apricots, prunes and figs. So, I mean, it's all there. It does, but, you know, it, 
it takes a lot of research by the looks of it. But as long as you've got, you know, as long as you know what you're doing, I, I think there are a lot of ways of, of well, more than adequately uh, making up for such. I mean, I mentioned vitamin uh, vitamins. In terms of vitamin B12, uh, that is for the body to maintain a healthy blood and healthy nervous system. Uh, many vegans um, can get sources of vitamin B12 from uh, breakfast cereals again, and sweet and soy drinks, uh, yeast extracts. Marmite is mentioned as well. Marmite, uh, which is fortified with um, vitamin B12. Now, a lot of people don't like Marmite. A lot of people do like Marmite. It's awful. Yeah. It's terrible stuff. Shit. Remember that uh, time I done a deep I... dive into breakfast cereals? What's that, sorry? Remember that time I done a deep dive into breakfast cereals and the Kellogg's uh, family? Yeah. Seventh day Adventists, and. <laughs> Wait, remember that? You probably didn't read it, but I wrote, I wrote like an essay on it, pretty much. Uh, cereal conflicts and all that. Um, Oh, oh, where to begin? Uh, Seventh Day Adventists. Uh, there were two people there. Uh, one a doctor, one normal guy. Uh, the the names are Kellogg. Uh, they sent one to medical school because they needed a doctor. He ended up creating this um, uh, like a pre-digested grain that they could. They, it was too hard to eat. Like, and that's that's kind of what uh, what granola ended up to be. Uh, then he went back, they were refining it and all that, him and his brother were refining it. They ended up pushing it out uh, as a product. And the Seventh-day Adventists, they don't allow uh, anything spicy, nothing that can like stimulate the senses because they're really like uh, kind of Amish in a way. Like So anything that was spicy was like said to be the devil's work because it makes you horny and shit, apparently, according wow. to them. Uh, so oh, that rings a bell, actually, Tom. That, ring, that rings a bell, that part of it, yeah. It's I can remember mental. that. Like, yeah. It is mental. Uh, they got loads on it. But uh, the the guy that oh, actually yeah. invented it wanted to keep it within the Seventh-day Adventists. The brother wanted to add sugar, and then they released that as uh, cornflakes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 what a story, Mark. What a story. Bloody <laughs> hell. Um... Omega-3 fatty acids, uh, they are found, particularly found in uh, fish, etc. Um, but for a vegan diet, you can find them in flaxseed or linseed oil, rapeseed oil, soy oil and soy based food, such as tofu, walnuts. And um, yeah, evidence suggests that plant sources of omega-3 fatty acids may not have the same benefits in reducing the risk of heart disease as those in oily fish. A lot of um a lot of seed oils though they actually promote a lot of diseases. Like you got your vegetable oils, sunflower oils, uh everything like that. It they, they uh really bad to you like Christ. I guess too much of anything is bad for you, mind. Like yeah. you have been you know it's, I don't think it's a case of too much. it's just plain bad for you. I'm not saying like uh, like everything you I'm not saying everything you listed is bad food. Just the, like the vegetable oils, the seed oils that people use to like fry things and things. Well, they say if you follow a vegan diet, that you can still look after your heart by eating at least five portions of variety of fruit and vegetables every day, cutting down the high saturated fat. That they, and that that pops up quite a lot. That's, that's and uh, what's how much salt you eat, which is common sense, really. That's pretty much common sense. A lot of it is common sense. in terms of the. In terms of staying healthy as a vegan, a lot of it is common sense, but there are then little bits where you do we really need to do a little bit of research, I feel, definitely, just to make sure you are getting, you know, everything you need. That's my take on it. Yeah. 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 yeah really well, to be honest. Definitely. Yeah. And that's where, that's where I'm at on the, the health side of things and uh, your facts and figures and whatnot. Well, the... Uh... Yeah. I think I mentioned earlier the game changers. I mentioned. I'm pretty sure I did. Uh, that um, there's a documentary about the MMA guy. But if you don't want to watch your documentary, there's a Joe Rogan podcast. There's a clip where it goes into the facts and figures about the, the pros and cons of uh, the meat and veg thing. Like you said, like you know, uh, can you get enough protein and blah blah blah. And they lay it out like proper mathematical and all that's great. So now that we've um, focused on on veganism, vegetarianism. Uh, where are we at since are any of us thinking of of making the change of the transition where where, where are we at with it 
What about you? Are you? Um, I'm desperately trying to. Um, I I would like to totally cut meat from the diet. Absolutely, I, I that's what I've been trying to do. Um, the past couple of weeks, I know. Um, I know Sean will say, just do it, guy. Just do it. But um, yeah, that's that's right, Matt. I, I've heavily, heavily, heavily cut it out, and, and I'm aiming to um, to do so at the moment. Definitely, um, not so much vegan, perhaps. Maybe eventually, who knows? But um, at the moment, um, I am trying to heavily, heavily cut any meat from my diet, basically. Uh, where, where are we at on it? Rich? Uh, well, like I mentioned, I've been doing it for the last week and a bit, week and a half, so somewhere like that. Um, so it's been, e- like, I think it's been pretty easy to do, to be honest. But, it is easy. But, like, at the end of the day, I do, like, I enjoy eating meat. It's, I, I like the taste of it. And it's not a case of people saying, well, yeah, you can get out of that. It's like, yeah, but, you know, there's certain meats that I do enjoy the taste of. And if I can just reduce that, you know, and only eat meats on certain occasions, you know, just maybe, spe- like you say, like flexitarian, basically, um, that yeah. would probably be my best case for it. It might, uh, also, it might also, you might also notice you feel better and you feel healthy yeah. with it as well. That could be another thing. Yeah, to to be honest, like more energy and yeah, like the last week or so, I haven't really missed eating meat. Like it's it's not, you know, that like 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 I said about the chicken thing. (laughs) I put it out the fridge. I was like, God, that smells so good. But you know, there might come a time where you know we're out somewhere with a family and there's this really nice dish. It could be my birthday, for example, and I think you know what, I'm going to have tandoori chicken or whatever just for for this thing and. I, like I think that's okay as long as you know where it's coming from and you, and you were like Becca said basically you are actively doing something to help yeah exactly you know, if you're doing yeah, something yeah, to yeah. Help, you know you're doing that's your one of the main points of pain yes what was yeah. that, that, that hits it in on the head yeah exactly if you're doing something to help then you know that's that's what I'm, I'm trying to do and yeah I guess yeah well, same year really yeah definitely definitely uh, well, the, the last part. Oh, sorry, but uh, do you want to finish off? No, I'm done. As well, uh, but the last like uh, two weeks, I've I, I've not cut out meat. Like you know, I'm not going to say that I have, but I've been doing uh, some like fasting. I suppose some people might call it a bit extreme, but uh, I've gone like sixty hours uh, one week, and then the next week I done uh, about forty eight hours. And I'm, you know, obviously during those days there's no meat. I'll have a little bit of a uh, fruit uh, now and then during there. So I suppose those are like unintentional vegetarian days. But when I come back to it, I'll have a fucking chicken or whatever, you know. Yeah. I, I, I've noticed the difference. And what I'm, I'm, try, I'm just trying to train myself to think differently about food and kind of reset myself a bit. But I'm not sure if I go vegetarian, to be honest. Um, I know my brother as well. He's three weeks into a full, uh, what is it called? Keto, keto diet? Keto diet? Uh, just meat. Just wow. just meat diet, yeah. like yeah. just meat, and uh, he's he's doing that. He's eating a meal once a day, uh, just meat. He's he's like three weeks into that. He's he's he said he's he's pretty close person, so he doesn't say much. But he said he feels pretty good, like you know, about himself. And uh, but he doesn't want to say anything until he's done the month, because yeah. that's all with it, like you know. That's fair. So it's kind of a yeah. I think. Like I, when everywhere opens, everything's back to normal or as close to normal as it is out of lockdown. Um, next time, like like we go out for food or I'm out to food with people, um, I'm going to like try to start ordering more vegetarian options. I think that's something because that, I don't, I I never do. I always order, you know, the meat option when I'm anywhere. So I think that's going to be something that's on my mind more now or perhaps just be more conscious of uh what you're actually what's in what you're ordering and stuff yeah you know yeah i've started looking i've started looking at food packets like i found it quite comical uh yesterday i think it was um the smoky bacon packet of crisps from tesco is vegan and the cheese and onion (laughs) is vegetarian i know it's got cheese in it but i'm just like so the bacon one is vegan like I was talking to Beck about just going straight back to that, you know, chicken yeah. and mushroom. <laughs> What's that about? It's just crazy, it's chaos. Wait, how do you know where you are? How do you know where you are if something that says chicken on it? Yeah. It's just like, wait a minute, I can eat this. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> it's funny because like one of the main foods that I've eaten all my life, a chicken and mushroom pot noodle, is vegetarian anyway. So it's you know, uh, yeah, exactly. That's fine for me, but yeah, but I think. Uh, I don't know. I think I think all of us are pretty clued up on this sort of stuff, and we're all kind of actively thinking about. It. I know Sean's been doing it now for years, so um, yeah, it's, we we do our our best. I think as a, as a group, I would say, I would say that's something. Yeah. We are, and it, I think with us though, it's a case of we are aware, we are conscious of what's going on, you know. So anything there out is our choice, really. You yeah. know, we we're not we're not shutting our eyes to it. We fully aware of what's going on. And uh, it's as simple as that, really. Mm. We're not burying the head in our sands, pretending it isn't happening. We're not saying it's not happening. And also, we aren't uh, alienating anybody. Personally, um, I'm not trying to have a go at meat eaters, nor am I trying to, you know, say well, veganism is the answer. We left we are meat eaters here talking about vegetarianism. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's mainly... This is mainly... You know, a look into an eye opener for ourselves, an understanding of ourselves. That that's where that's where I've been at with it more so. Yeah, definitely. yeah. Look, and it's uh, been very insightful, well, definitely. A look into a uh, something you 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 know you wouldn't otherwise look into, in it really. Exactly. Yeah. yeah exactly. It's made me think, definitely. Though it's, it's definitely made me think, looking into it all, and question myself and my choices. And the foods that I put into my body and so on has definitely made me question a lot of that. That's what I found with fasting. After I do that, you you just uh, like process sugar. I want to I want to try and get away from processed sugar, and I'm just trying to reset my brain a bit. Like well, that diet I done a, like a year or two ago, where I cut sugar out of my diet completely, and that was for a, my skin condition that I have. I you know I've read that that helped, and my God, that was tough. That was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do mainly because the first two weeks I was incredibly weak mainly because I'm not getting any sort of sugar like you know artificial or natural yeah um, I had to introduce fruit back into my diet early just because I was flagging so much and I was literally just living off nuts and uh so leafy vegetables and chicken that was basically what I was eating did you get off it though I get off the uh, processed sugar. Did you uh, eventually get off it? Um, yeah, so I'd done that for I think it was three months. I'd done it for Fuck, and nice, and it was because that, obviously that included alcohol as well. So I wasn't drinking alcohol for three months. Um, and during that time, it was like the sort of beginning of summer period, so it was nice weather. Um, people in work were having like you know, house party, like barbecues and stuff like that. So I would go over there and I'd be drinking flavored water. And I'd be the designated driver. It was quite, actually quite nice, to be fair, because I remember everything that happened at those nights, and um, I was fine. I brought my own my own buns with me because certain buns, like I was, I was. That's when I started eating whole whole wheat stuff, basically. So um, whole grain rice, whole wheat bread, and all that stuff. And I still do to this day. I, I it's, don't, nicer. it's nicer. It is. I, I don't. I like. I say I don't eat white bread, but if it's my choice. I won't eat it basically, but if it's given to me, then yeah, I don't mind. But um, but yeah, I was eating like you know whole grain burger buns, all that stuff, um, and yeah, I was, I did actually feel all right after you know the initial month and a half, I guess. Um, but it was a tough diet though, as it was a tough one, mainly because I'm picking up stuff, I'm checking the label, I'm like can't eat that, you know, chucking it, and I had to sort of basically everything I had to do, I had to cook myself, which was fairly annoying one thing i did do which i really like doing was making my own popcorn that was kind of like my like, so, sort of like snack replacement it was like eating grapes and eating my own popcorn which um i used peanut oil for so i did put a little bit of that at the bottom of the, the thing check because uh, they sell the kernels in tesco whack that in and then you just chuck whatever topping you want on it so like i'd put like paprika on it one day or yeah. You know stuff like that, and it was oh, so good. So I, whenever I go to the cinema, I wouldn't buy any food, no drinks. I take my own water, my own popcorn with me to the cinema. Saved a fuck ton of money in that sense. Um, but yeah, that diet was was killer. But it, it, I, I I would suggest doing it. And people ask me, "Is like why didn't you stick with it?" I was like, "Well, even though I was saving money going to the cinema doing that, 
everyday life, like just buying normal stuff, I was spending so much more money because I was buying like proper portions of chicken, you know, like good portions one. And then like some of the whole grain options were more expensive than just the regular options. Yeah. Um, I was buying more fruit and fruit isn't that cheap really, you know, depending on what fruit you buy. Um, especially like the fresh fruit, like fresh food I find is fucking like organic stuff is all expensive. Like I, I tried not to buy the, the plastic pots of fruit because they have added sugar to them and added chemicals and all that stuff. To them. So I tried not to buy them. Um, and like I bought the packets of plain chicken. They were, they didn't have any sugar in them. So I was like, Oh, okay. I can actually eat plain chicken. But like the Tika ones did and all that stuff. Oh, it was a nightmare to keep track of, to be honest. Though. I, I kind of wish that I kept with it, but at the same time, yeah. Yeah, I think that's where you find though on the poverty line. You you find people that are a bit more uh, a bit more obese, like than uh, than otherwise, because it is a lot a lot more expensive to eat uh, non yeah processed food like that. Like you know, definitely, definitely. definitely. Sugar's a drug, so it's got to be hard to get off. You know, it's what we've been raised on, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I'd um, firstly like to thank everybody I spoke to in the lead up to this cast. Um, also the Greasy Vegan, Becca Morgan, and Harry as well. Um, was outstanding in contribution, all of them. So I cannot thank them enough. Um, yeah, and thanks to everyone for listening. Check us out, as always, at Steecast on pretty much all social media platforms. Thanks to everyone who's been getting involved so far. Um, if there are anything we've said you disagree with, or maybe you even agree with, let us know in some comments. We'd like to have a bit of a conversation. Maybe you've, you've really disagreed with something I've said, with something Thomas said, Richard has said, Sean has said. Let us know. It's no problem. We'd like to we'd like to hear from you. We bring it up on the on the uh, recap episode, didn't it? Yeah, which is the next episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're happy for a bit of a back and forth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. On that, then, we'll see you next time. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes. Ta-da.